WNYAthletics.com would like to thank today's sponsors, Howard Hanna Real Estate Services. Ready to sell your home? Visit HowardHanna.com today. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Western New York Immediate Care, with four convenient locations in the Buffalo area, Amherst, Buffalo, Depew, Lancaster, and Orchard Park. Western New York Immediate Care is now offering telemedicine services to provide you care anytime, anywhere. Visit WNY Immediate Care on site or virtually at WNYImmediateCare.com. Logistics Plus Buffalo is your go to resource for all your transportation needs. LP moves freight of all shapes and sizes all across the world. Call LP Buffalo today at 716. 716- 877-9653 or email buffalo at logisticsplus.com Ad Pro Sports Ad Pro is the largest team sports dealers and brand merchandise providers in the nation. For a variety of custom merchandise solutions from apparel to promotional items visit adprosports.com Empire Electric For all your home, business or office electrical needs call Empire Electric at 716-634-0330. Free estimates and financing available for all customers. Empire Electric. Call 716-634-0330. Off this beautiful Saturday evening, a great matchup of high school football and Francis, it couldn't be any more of a bigger one. Probably have a comparison in terms of the Comparing to the college level, this is like watching Ohio, Ohio State take it on Michigan. St. Joe's versus Canisius. Football action coming your way in the next couple of minutes. My name is Jacob Flack. Alongside with me is Francis Beck. And Francis, Canisius comes on the road 2-1 and one overall after getting back to the 500 win column last week. We were there at that game against Western New York Maritime Health Sciences. They picked up the 43-30 victory for St. Joe's. They come in on their home turf undefeated shutting out Upper Canada College 28 to nothing. Yeah, this team's 3 and 0. They came out and got a big win over Erie PA, which is usually one of the top teams in the Erie PA area. That's a, you know, think of it as a super BPS team just to get your head around that. So they came out, they got a big win over them. Really shocked much of the area, including myself, uh, watching this team. Uh, we didn't know what the state of the St. Joe's team would be as Mike Corona enters his third year. Right now, it looks like they're heading in the direct, right direction, and right now Coach Corona is looking for his first win in this rivalry series. Yeah, and you can't do it any other at this point in terms of the animosity coming in this game. You know, talk. You know, let's talk a little bit about Kanisha's game with their win against West New York Maritime. Nicholas Penyachev took command of that offense, throwing for four touchdowns, only on 22 passing attempts with 178 yards in the air. Jaden Clark had two touchdowns re uh, receptions, while Mike Docker and Rico Brown each had one. And in the run game was phenomenal. Damari Yancey and Dyrell Howard Dolson combined for more than 130 yards on the ground and each had a touchdown as well. Dominating effort, but towards that fourth quarter, we saw West New York Maritime Health Sciences have a little bit of a comeback in them. They made it a little bit interesting. And that was one thing that Craig Krasansky spoke to me earlier this week where they played great football and to the end, they got to learn how to finish. Yeah, you know, this scene, you know, I think they took advantage, especially up the middle. This Canisius line is big. I know they're supposed to be having a down year. They lost all these guys, but their line is still fantastic. And they took care of Maritime, a team that was known for running the ball these past few years, and really beat them up the middle oh, with Dolson. So I think if you get those guys to push for four straight quarters, they're going to have a very good chance to win this game. And then heading back over to St. Joe's, their senior quarterback, Aaron Jentz, has been a dual threat, to say the least. 267 passing yards, three touchdowns, no picks yet, but also on the ground, just as as many passing yards and rushing yards, 265, four rushing touchdowns, along with his running back in Deion Anderson, who's got five rushing touchdowns on the season and 338 yards to carry as well. So you got a guy that can do both. He can throw when he needs to, but they like to establish that run game by, by – uh, early on so look for a good amount of option reads and just when you see both those guys in the field you got to be careful who's going to get in the ball yeah they love to do a lot of option it's spread option and they have lots of pulling guards which i absolutely love uh you're going to see on many of their plays 
uh, two to three polling linemen, and then they have their fullback, Peyton Brock, who they line up really kind of at a tight end position, but he's really built more like a fullback who acts as their leading block blocker. This is a really fun offense to watch. So Canisius, the away team today, will be receiving the ball first. St. Joe's getting their formation ready to boot this off for another beautiful week of high school football. And we'll try to get a little bit into the action that happened last night later in this game because, Francis, you and I spoke. There was a lot of close games that took place. In fact, uh, I just, you know, I'm going to double check it right now. There's another game that is already far underway uh, in a double A action. Bennett is leading Orchard Park. Uh, 34 to 7 in the middle of the second quarter. So, uh, Bennett, a team uh, that'll be one of the games we're keeping an eye on this afternoon. That was Kavon Walker able to grab the ball, and they'll have him right at around the 38 yard line. This Canisius offense, uh, led by a wide receiver, let's start with Mike Doctor. Uh, this Canisius team is very young. They only started two seniors their first game of the season. One of them was Mike Doctor. He's a leader. We saw him last week. He makes tons of plays. They're going to be looking for him a lot, especially on the first drive of this rivalry game. Well, they go with that shotgun formation with the two wide receivers set, the snap, and it's going to be the draw play, trying to get some blocking up the middle, but this time they might have just gotten about a yard or so. Looked like that will be... Number seven there is the first carry of the ball game, and there he is, the junior, Dyrell Howard Dolson. Listen to the defensive end, so more of that defensive-minded guy, but so far throughout this season, he's been amazing at the running back position. You know, and you look at him, he's not really built like a standard running back. He's a little bit higher. I think he's 6'2", 6 6'4", 6 but he's got tons of power, just like you would a defensive end, and he's able to really, he's really a tough guy to tackle. They credit him with a two-yard gain, and they'll go with that two-wide receiver set. Pass is caught. Tackled right at the midfield marker. He just got enough, and Canisius will move the chains on that catch. Number four, Jaden Clark, the sophomore, able to come up big and get the chains to move right away. Yeah, Jaden Clark has been has come out with a strong start to his sophomore season. Uh, he was their leading receiver heading into last week's game. Um, I'll try to pull it up, what exactly he has uh, after three games, but only a sophomore. I'm told he's already getting looks to play at the next level. He's going to be a star for years to come for this Crusaders team. Four wide receivers set, bunch to the right, and it goes to Mike Docker trying to get towards the 45. I don't even think he got there. May have been tackled at around the 47-yard line, a pickup of about three yards, and Mike Docker coming into this game with 12 catches, 134 receiving yards, two touchdowns, and was just recently the week three Connolly Cup nominee. Yeah, I think you can see right now with Coach Krasanski, they're having a little trouble up the middle with Dolson. So they're trying these outside passes, Clark and Doctor. That was just a quick screen to Doctor. See if they can find something on the outside a little bit and then go back to that game, running game up the middle. Well, they stick with that same formation. They'll stay with the three wide receivers to the right for Penuchev and the one to the left side. Trying to quickly look, quick pass it is caught trying to get close to the first down marker and it looked like he may have just gotten enough to chain gains waiting for the official word and yes he did Canisius Crusaders move it once more yeah another just strong pass out to Jaden Clark they're gonna keep going to that outside until Joes can really find a way to stop them and going early on in this passing attack for Canisius he's already given it to his two main receivers and Mike Doctor and Jaden Clark and you know, it's those quick passes right away. That's what you want to do. You want to get those quick release points. You don't want St. Joe's that don't have a good pass rush here to not get to the quarterback. Same with that two wide receiver set. This time they'll go ahead and run the ball, trying to get some extra blocking. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but looks like they might have credited him a yard as well. Number two, Nizel Lash, the junior there on the carry. Yeah, just a simple run to the right side. That's usually where they line up Dolson. Uh, but yeah, they they sub in uh, they sub in Lash and he's able to get a couple in and really no gain. So this Joe's defensive line uh, really showing out on this first drive. Game plan for St. Joe's main focus is just to make sure these kids are prepared for each week for this game. That's what Mike Corona spoke to me earlier this week. We try to find a way for each game to end up going one and zero and then set the tone the rest of the way. Catch once more at around the 30, lunges forward to gain about an extra yard or so, tackled maybe around the 28-yard line, 
and the third first down on this opening Canisius drive. Yeah, Canisius moving the ball very well, especially through the pa passing game. Uh, Nicholas Penichev, their quarterback, comes to Canisius from Canada. He is uh, 36 of 60 on the season, 437 yards, five touchdowns for the Crusader. This junior uh, trying to really build something uh, for this Crusaders team under first-year head coach Kai Krasanski. So far early on this drive, showing a lot of poise and showing a lot of quick release on his throwing. And a nice little end-around play to the right side and gets tripped up. A nice possible touchdown saving tackle there, but once again, it is Jaden Clark, the sophomore, able to come up big to put this team in the red zone. Yeah, they mentioned Clark, uh, they did a little end around. They did a lot of those to Yancey um, last, uh, last week as well, but this time they do it to Clark, and he's able to get the nice gain on the outside. Clark, uh, 228 receiving yards, two touchdowns in the first three games of the season. Pick up of about 18 yards on the play. First and goal situation, here's the snap. Quick looking to the right side, that pass is caught. Trying to get past one defender, and just like that on the opening drive, Kanisha starts it off with a touchdown. Yeah, just a simple pass to the outside, I believe that was Doctor who had, I don't know if you saw it any better, made the catch and in the short field is able to get it in. So you can see the replay here. Just a little simple hitch route. Doctor makes the catch, breaks a tackle, and gets into the end zone. Yeah, you are correct, Francis. That was Mike Doctor there that got the touchdown reception. His already third on the season. A quick six points for Canisius. Snap is down, boots on the way, and this kick is good. With seven minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the first quarter, Canisius on their opening drive strikes first. We'll take a quick break in the action. now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house we're confident we'll find your dream home howard hannah home happens here sometimes it just isn't your day we all need a little help from time to time that's why we're committed to providing safe quick and cost effective care and we keep it simple just walk in we're here for you learn more today And welcome back everyone to Western New York Athletics and the theme of that Kinesis drive was the doctor himself coming up big, getting some big catches there as he gets the first touchdown of the day. Penichev finding Mike Doctor for six points and now they're going to boot the ball away, get St. Joe's their first offensive drive. But one thing I liked about that drive, Francis, was uh, it felt quick, but they took a good amount of time on the clock, a little more than a four-minute drive. Yeah, you know what? And they did it by throwing the football, which is always uh, interesting. You know, which is always a good thing as well. They you saw that at the beginning, they had trouble running up the middle, so they changed their game plan a little bit. Go to the outside and are able to move to the, the ball down the field for a ton of success. And as a kick out of bounds, a squib kick opportunity that goes out of bounds, so that'll be a penalty. The set up St. Joe's on their opening drive in great field position, and that will bring out their starting quarterback, the senior Aaron Gents. Talked a little bit earlier in our little pregame show about how good of a dual threat quarterback he is, how dominant he was in his last game against Upper Canada College, and now can't ask for a more bigger opportunity, even though it's four games heading into this season. This is where you start to step up. Well, let's be honest. He's a senior playing at St. Joe's. One of your number one goals as a marauder is to beat Canisius. He has yet to do that in his high school career. You know he wants to do that today. Two wide receivers, a snap, and it's going to be a draw play. May have gotten back past the line of scrimmage, gaining about an extra yard or so on that first down carry. Yeah, that's Deion Anderson. He was already nominated for the Connolly Cup. Um, Anderson has 338 yards on the year, five touchdowns. He's averaging over 10 yards a carry. That's a pretty good uh, that's pretty good for a linebacker if you'd run the ball and get a first down almost every single time. Uh, they'll be looking to hit, Joe's will be looking to him to have a big day. Well, credit Anderson with two yards. So it'll be second down, eight yards to go to pick up the first. 
Two wide receivers both to the left side, and once again, it's going to be Anderson trying to break through. Check out one defender and another past the midfield marker using his burst of speed. Can he get taken down? And he does by Jaden Clark. Had to be careful on where he was grabbing him, but nonetheless, Anderson with that brute strength gets them in the Kenesha's territory. Yeah, you could tell. You know what? Those uh, neon green uh, fingers and uh, gloves really stick out. He breaks out. You know, I noticed in the film, he's a very shifty runner. He's able to break out of that offensive line and almost has the breakaway speed to put that into the end zone. But a big run here for St. Joe's. Big run indeed, and that sets the offense up with a two wide receiver set. Anderson once again in the backfield. Trent's taking a quick look. Now he'll take the snap. It's high, and he's got to do a draw play. As this play gets broken up from the start. Loss of one yard on the play, and that will bring up a second down. Yeah, you saw the snap go high, but I don't think that was the only issue there. I think the Joe's line was a little confused on their assignments. There may have been a blitz, a blitz there that confused them. Uh, but, you know, that play went for a loss, and uh, good for this Canisius defense. They, come, they give up a long run, but they're able to come back and get a big play to make it second and long. Gents along with Anderson and then their senior wide receiver and cornerback Steve Hoskins breaking out of that huddle. They'll stick with the two wide receivers bunch on each, every side. They've done it on the left and the right. They do it once more on the left side. Snap, give to Anderson, trying to get the blocking. Burst of speed, able to stay on his feet. And he has to go out of bounds, but he know if he kept his balance more, he was all the way for six. Had to go out of bounds on that play, but nonetheless, that will set up a third and short. Yeah, you can tell Anderson, I noticed in his film, very patient runner. You saw that right there, waiting behind his line as they were pulling, letting them form their blocks, and then he was able to bounce outside. You can tell he almost broke it for an even bigger gain, but a good gain for Anderson sets up third and short. That puts St. Joe's in a perfect spot to where, let's say hypothetically, they don't get it. They still only have two yards to pick up the first on a fourth down situation. Only two wide, they split them up to the left and white. Now Gents back under center. Here's the snap and the give to Anderson, trying to use the hole to get up. Did he get enough for the first down? St. Joe's, one of the linemen saying they have it. And now is saying that they have the football, but he was down on the play before the ball came out. Oh, that's gonna be awfully close. I think they're gonna need to bring this out for a measurement. Because I'm seeing it, it's just on the 14 yard line. Oh, they're gonna give him the first down. I think he got that maybe about by quarter of a football in my my eye calculations. Yeah, and on this angle, it was extremely close. As soon as he cut to the left side, you knew that once he was down right away, how close he was to the first down marker, but the refs didn't take a lot of time. They said he got more than enough. So down to the 14-yard line. Less than five minutes going here in the first quarter. Here's the snap, the give. Anderson cutting through, gets tackled hard inside the 10 and down at around the six, maybe seven yard line. A nice pick up there. Uh, it looks like St. Joe's offense is having a lot of success running the ball to the right side. Shout out to their right tackle and right guard for getting the push. I think the St. Joe's coaching staff is seeing that they have the matchups there. They're going to go keep going there until Canisius can find a way to stop it. So they credit him with seven yards on the play. Excuse me, eight yards on the play. So only two yards more. You got to get to the five. But they're knocking on the door in the end zone. This time, Anderson juking up the middle. And it's a St. Joe's touchdown. Deion Anderson having a hot start to the season on the ground, and he tallies it more with one more. Six rushing touchdowns on the season. And just like that, they're a point away from tying it up. And it all started with a great fake by their court by Jens. He had the ball. I thought he was going to take it to the right. I think Kanish just thought he was going to the right. But Deion Anderson kept it, went to the left side, and snuck in for the touchdown. Here's the extra point try. The snap's down. It is on the way. And this one is good. Henry Murphy, the senior, with a powerful boot to knot it up all at seven with 4-12 remaining in the first quarter. It's a rivalry that's been going on for a long time, and who would, 
Who would have thought that it would have been any different right now? All in up at 7. We'll take a break in the action. You're watching Western New York Athletics. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. Welcome back, everyone, to West New York Athletics. I'll toss it quickly over to Francis Beck, who has a scoring update. Yeah, Class AA battle started at 1 o'clock. It is the Bennett Tigers going into Orchard Park, and they lead the Quakers 40-7 to without a, with about a minute left in the first half. Uh, so, uh, you know, the Tigers have struggled when they played against Orchard Park at home, especially on Saturdays for their homecoming. Right now, Tigers having no issues. I'm told they're running at will against this Quaker team. Well, let's remember, though, Francis, you know, last year during around winter time, they were at the state championship finalist team in their class. And they're taking on an OP team that's had a phenomenal start to the year as well. Yeah, yeah, Ochre Prey, especially like Ben Gosella, that air attack. I think he's the second leading passer in all of Section 6. Here's Penuchev trying to get the passing game going. Leads his wide receiver, Clark, a little bit too much to the left. Wasn't expecting it. Ball falls incomplete. Yeah, it looked like Henry Murphy was there. He kind of made a dough for St. Joe's, try to pick it off. I think he just missed it. I don't think he tipped it. It didn't look like he did, but that was awfully a dangerous throw there for Penichev. And I'll subs out number seven, Tyrell Howard Dolson, as looks like Nizel Lash will be in the backfield along with Penuchev. Stink, sticking with a three wide receiver set. Here's the snap. And ends up fumbling it. And is tackled hard. There on the tackle, number three, bringing the boom, Robert Hanspach. And on the carrier, carry there was actually Damari Yancey there. Yeah, I don't know how Yancey got that ball back. That was... He didn't really get that handoff clean whatsoever, and the whole time he was just trying to get it back. Meanwhile, the St. Joe's defenders, as you said, were right in the backfield, and that's a huge loss right now for this uh, Canisius team. Third down and 18 with that loss of negative eight yards. They're going to have to go with their shotgun. Spread offense, four wide receiver set, trips to the right, one to the left. Quick pass, that's through the hands of the intended receiver, and it will fall incomplete to set up fourth down. Yeah, tough uh, throw there. He tried to throw it in a lot of traffic, and no, and the St. Joe's defender was all over that play, so they're going to force this Canisius Crusaders into a three and out. I don't think last week against Maritime, this Canisius offense had a three and out. I mean, you were there, maybe you remember. I don't. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I'm trying to think off the top of my head I do, but... How about this? Fourth down and 18. They look like they're in the position to go for it. Uh, oh, now Penuchev. A, a quick hit punt right now. Here's your pooch kick opportunity. Booting that one going well over the head of the punt returner for St. Joe's. And it's a beauty inside the 10-yard line. I actually don't think that was Penuchev there that had the boot. That might have been Mike Doctor there that had the punt. Yeah, I, I missed it too. Uh, but you know... You know what, I do want to mention, though, we got to remember, the new first-year head coach uh, for Canisius, Craig Krasansky, was at Will South for many years. Mm -hmm. He never liked to punt the ball. So he's just bringing that same philosophy here to Canisius. So for the second time, St. Joe's will be able to get the ball, bringing their offense out, but it's going to be a long one, 91 yards to go. Uh, Deion Anderson says, I'm fine. We just went 60 yards from my back. I'll take us 90 yards. 
They're sticking with the same formation that two wide receivers set. Anderson in the backfield right next to his quarterback, Jens. He can run the ball as well. Here's a snap. Rolling out to the left side. Trying to find an open receiver. Chucking it downfield, but this one will be thrown into the sidelines, his own sidelines, for an incomplete pass. Yeah, Jens has had nobody out there. Kanisha's defense secondary does a great job covering that play up and forcing a second down. And you mentioned that good coverage. That, that's been one of the strong suits, I feel like, for uh, Kanisha's at times, you know, throughout the season. When they're clicking, they're clicking, especially with the two wide receivers set. I mean, heck, that's less guys, and, you know, you have to focus on. I mean, only two wide receivers, but at the same time, in terms of your secondary, makes it a little bit easier when Jens has a hard time trying to find an open man. Yeah, it certainly does. Sticking with that same formation. Here's the snap. Looks like it's Jens. Cutting up to the left side, and there he goes to the 20 to the 30 with one man trying to bring him down, and Jen says, no, you're coming with me. A big yardage pickup there by the senior, Aaron Jentz, and the Crusaders get out of their own territory for a huge game. Yeah, it looks like that hole was between the guard and the center. He it opened up like the Red Sea for him. He sneaks through it and bounces to the outside. Big run for Aaron Jentz. That's, the thing. That's just the thing he needs to get going. I did like the fact that he brought him with him, too. You see that on that play? That was incredible. Yeah, he's a tough runner. Uh, and I think he saw what Dean Anderson did down here on the last drive, uh, almost stiff-arming a guy away. He says, hey, I can do that, too. So they stick with the same formation they have so far on this drive. This time, Anderson trying to get his turn. Breaking off one defender, spinning through, pass around the 45 and down at the 46-yard line. Pickup of about five yards. Jake, this offensive line for St. Joe's is doing a great job. You know, I was, uh, you know, somebody was talking to a coach, uh, another coach of a varsity team, another uh, a football coaching staff in Section 6. They faced the St. Joe's JV, and they thought when they first got there, they thought they sent the varsity team by accident to face them. They said their JV linemen, all five of those guys would start with their varsity team. So if you think, they have massive guys on JV. What does that say about the guys they have on varsity? Not only how big they are, but how technically sound they must be. Well, Kanisha's called timeout their first one of the, this first half, a two-on-one when made any go in the first quarter. And it's funny you mentioned about the football program of St. Joe's. Because when speaking, when I spoke to Mike Corona earlier this week, the reason for the early success is he's talking about how the seniors on this team have implemented a system to get in the heads of the underclass and about how important this program is and how you know there's a certain standard that needs to be made here for this football program to stay successful. Because two years ago, I had the COVID uh, pandemic. Last year, you know, was still going through the, uh, the growing pains of that COVID pandemic and not a lot of those seniors from those two St. Joe's seniors class were able to do what the senior class this year is now they get a full off season, they get a full workout program as well, and now they're able to get a full off season and season to help the underclassmen of the JV squad to help them, groom them, become better football players once they get their shot in the varsity level. Yeah, I think I last, I heard a rumor somewhere the whole St. Joe's football program has about 90 players. Correct, yes. <laughs> On max preps, they have them officially down as 97. Between three teams, right? Right. Wow, that, that's just amazing. Remember, Coach Corona, he started his tenure about the toughest time any coach has ever started with his first season during COVID. So he had to battle from that. So, uh, you know, I remember he was saying that first year was just about getting the seniors out there. And then the second year when they finally had a full year, full off season, was really about building up that program, getting those kids out there. And, you know, I, I know you talked to him. He's in a very inspiring team. He's a great guy to be around. So Henry Murphy had that catch there to help the Marauders move the chains. Ball's on the 32-yard line, less than two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Here's the snap and the give, trying to run it up the gut. I think that was number six there who just got back to the line of scrimmage, Jackson Keller, the senior. You know, we talk about uh, Coach Corona. Coach Krasanski, meanwhile, comes over his first season. Can you sure shows? He comes from Williamsville South, known for that high attack offense. They've had some great quarterbacks over the year, including one by the name of, I think his name is Joe Licata, who you saw last night, who's now the coach of the Billies. Uh, I imagine uh, quarterbacks are going to be 
Uh, once they see that, it, you, you don't think Nick Penichev knows? This guy coached Shilakata. Maybe he knows something about coaching quarterbacks. Option play. Jen's going to keep it up. Staying on his feet, and he's tackled down. Good job wrapping him up by the Canisius defender and Mike Doctor. But nonetheless, Gents able to push forward on this very strong ground attack they've had early on. I am mighty impressed with this St. Joe's line. You know, they don't – look, I know I mentioned, you know, they have great JV linemen, but just doing the eyeball test right now between the Canisius and Joe's line, it looks like the Canisius line is a little bit bigger. But you know what? They're getting the better push. Uh, you know, it's not all about size. You still got to have technically, you still got to be technically sound. And right now, they're more technically sound. They're able to get the push. And right now, they need three yards to pick up the first down on this third down play. Two wide receivers to the left, trying to get Kinesis to jump. Now he'll set back in with Dion right next to him. High snap. They give it over to Anderson, trying to run up the middle, get, picking up the first down and about a yard or so more. St. Joe's is sticking tough there in the trenches. You mentioned in terms of height, sniff significantly a bit taller than St. Joe's is Kinesis' defense, but still, I mean, once you have the right technique, the right footwork as an offensive lineman, that doesn't matter, and you're seeing that right now is right now they're winning the trenches a bit. Yeah, they certainly, yeah, they certainly are. They're doing a great job under center. So here the buzzer sound, and that will be the end of the first quarter. St. Joe's knocking on the red zone opportunity and knocking on a chance to get their first lead of the game. Folks, what else did you expect? It's St. Joe's Canisius High School football. It's all knotted up at seven. We'll take a break in the action. You're watching Western New York Athletics. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you say this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For all your insurance questions, call the Wolf at 835-WOLF. now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house we're confident we'll find your dream home howard Hanna. home happens here second quarter action starting up in just a little bit my name is jacob Fike. alongside me is francis becker live here at st joe's high school for st joe's marauders canisius crusaders high school football matchup on a beautiful saturday afternoon some clouds in the sky, but it's a nice, perfect weather. And how about that for a catch? Getting it close to the goal line. Number three, Robert Anspach, able to corral it in off a beautiful throw by Gents. Yeah, Anspach, we haven't heard from him much yet today, uh, but he's one of these key guys on the Joes offense. Anspach has uh, six catches, 84 yards, a touchdown coming into today's game. How it feels like in this situation, it's kind of like, you know, picking up a second and short or third and short. It feels like you can do whatever you want here. Try to throw the ball if you want to or just try to give it to Anderson or let or, Gents do it on the option play. Or, yeah, you do some kind of fake where you try to fake it to Anderson and throw it to the right side. Snap, high, over to Anderson, trying to get it through, and he is short. And you know what? You can see you. We can see it right from our end. That's the Canisius blue crew out there, all dressed in white, and they're going to make it as difficult as possible for Joe's to score right now. Yeah, you got the student section on our left side on the camera. On the right side, you have St. Joe's student section. Big, big turnout here. I was here uh, last night. I was at Will South, and there was a big turnout as well for their homecoming game. But it seems like there's more people here at this matchup. Oh, I, I think I heard last week. Uh, they weren't sell, they aren't sell, they weren't selling tickets at the door. You had to buy pre, buy your tickets pre-sale in order to make it in here. Second and goal, ball at the three yard line. Here's a snap, trying to throw it, feeling the pressure, trying to scramble, trying to dive for it. Looked like he hit the pylon, and it's a St. Joe's touchdown. Aaron Gents 
giving it all on the line on that play, getting his fifth rushing touchdown of the season, and the Marauders get their first lead of the game. I, I don't know about you, but this St. Joe's team looks inspired right now. They, they probably got a great speech from Coach Corona. They have they haven't won this game, these guys. They haven't won these games since 2019. St. Joe's has lost 15 to the last 16 against Canisius. They want this game bad. There's a snap, the boots on the way, and the PAT is good by Henry Murphy, the senior. 10-34 remaining here in the first half. St. Joe's up on Canisius 14-7, and let's stick here on our broadcast to talk a little bit about the all-time matchup. You mentioned it just about 30 seconds ago, how St. Joe's hasn't won against Canisius since the 2019 regular season. Since 2012, Canisius has won 15 of the last 16 matches, but Marauders still leaving the all-time series, but it's not by much. 48 wins, the 45 losses, and three ties. And you know what I failed to mention? Last year, largest margin, Canisius beat St. Joe's 66 to nothing. You know, they still, Canisius has that still pinned up on their Twitter page, uh, that 66 to nothing score. You don't think that's motivating this Marauders team right now? I'll tell you what, if I'm one of those Marauder players or even Mike Corona, you see that and you're like, got to make sure that that doesn't, you know, obviously doesn't happen again, but at the same time, try to show that Canisius, hey, we're here. Yeah, this is yeah, this is not going to be the games of past. This is a different program than they've seen in the past couple of years. So Murphy and his kicking team for Canisius are about to get sat and ready with the two returners for Canisius. Looks like that might be number seven over there, Howard Dolson. And Yancey there is the return. Here's the boot. Yes. Trying to squib it. Oh, yeah. nice. he touched it. He touched and it's going to stay in play. Did not go to out of bounds in time. So good job there by Murphy. You know, it didn't work the last time. This time it's able to work in their favor. And I think they have him right at the 19-yard line, 18-yard line. All right, so now if you're Canisius, Coach Herzanski, tell your offense, let's take a deep breath. I know we're down. We're not used to being in this position um, in terms of against St. Joe's. You know, they were down against you know, Walsh Jesuit. They were in a close game. But their second game, they were in a close game against Hawinas. This should be nothing new for Canisius. Take a deep breath, execute, and make some plays, and you'll be right back in this game. Well, they're going to start off with a four-wide receiver set. Throwing off to the left side. That pass is caught. Trying to get to the 30-yard line. Just short, but he might have just picked up enough for the first down. Yeah, just a simple hitch play to the left side. Makes the catch. Did you catch who, who made the catch, though? I couldn't catch who the receiver was. A good chance it might have been Clark. I know they're using Clark a little bit on that left side with Doctor on the right for their passing game. Yeah, Canisius white jerseys with the uh, white numbering and the blue outline. A little bit hard to see uh, right now. I think you would call that ice white. Ice white? Ice white, just complete all white uniforms. That was number 14 on the catch. Rico Brown, the senior. Yeah, and you know what? You, you saw Joe's come right up and make that play. They got the first down, but you know this Joe's offense is now re gonna be ready for those hitches. Now the question is, at what point does Canisius run a hitch and go? and you have Dr. Clark, you know, fake the hitch and then take off towards the end zone. Watch for that play to open up. So do have Dr. and Clark each on the left and right side. Quick pass, it's going to Dr. But he's met up by three, four, now six St. Joe's defenders. One of the guys there on the tackle, Robert and Spock, they're able to bring him down, and then St. Joe's is using that speed right away to make sure that he stayed down. Yeah, I also saw Benedict Musbum uh, also came in there to make a big play. I remember I talked to him last year at the start of the season. You know, when I went to St. Joe's last year, he had six captains, Coach Curran. He gave me six captains because um, they have different captains for each uh, of the different groups, and he was one of the captains, and it's the culture they're trying to build. So Benedict 
Musman makes a big play. He's one of the leaders on this team. One positive yardage after that catch. Bringing up now second down and nine. The snap, the fake, end around, trying to get the blocking, and tackled down past the 35, might have been around the 37 yard line. And once again, they are using his speed, the sophomore, Damari Yancey, getting the call. Yeah, you can see that Joe's defender, he was in the right spot. I think he just slipped. I don't know if he was pulled down or lost his footing, but he, he was in the right spot until he got off his feet to make a play. But instead, Yancey's able to get around him and get a couple yards, brings up third and short. Three yards to go for the first. Be a big opportunity for St. Joe's defense to stop him right here. Here's the snap. Penyuchev, quick pass. That is caught and tackled immediately. Number 26 nope. was the receiver. That was Evan Dean, but he is short of the first down, and we got an injured Marauder player down as well. Yeah, it was Steve Hoskins that came in and made the big play, and I believe he's a little slow to get up, but, uh, yeah, he made the big play uh, to go, and he came in low, made that play. Um, unfortunately, uh, looks like he's going to need some help uh, getting up, but he's one of their top guys, one of their top receivers as well uh, for this team, a senior leader for St. Joe's. So as we go to an injury timeout, we'll take a quick timeout here in the broadcast booth. 14-7, St. Joe's up on Canisius with 8-11 remaining in the first half. I love being home. We realize now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house. We're confident we'll find your dream home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Welcome back, everyone, to Western New York Athletics. As you might have just saw... You might have just heard about Steve Hoskins, who just walked off, being tended, still tended to by the trainers, but able to walk off on his own. Yeah, Hoskins, uh, he has six catches, 87 yards uh, coming into this game on offense. And as a defender, he has five total tackles. So penalty marker down on a fourth and one attempt by the Crusaders. This is big either way, which way it goes. Although I tell you what, uh, Coach Krasanski will still want to go for it. So we'll see what the official word is. They had a long discussion, but in the end, it's a false start against Canisius. So that, that that's big. It goes from fourth and one, where you could try, you know, running up the middle, getting the big play, to fourth and six, where you almost have to pass it if you're Canisius, especially with the way your running game's been going. And the short passing game has been there, but you feel like in this situation, you might as well want to try to get some bunch uh, I formation on the receiver to get some extra blocking. I wonder if this point is when they pull out that hitch and go. I, I think it's got to be coming soon. So they go four wide, three to the right, one to the left. The snap, pass, and it is caught. Looked like he's right at the first down marker. Got Looks it. like the line judge will give it to him. Kanishas on a big fourth down and short. Move the chains off a nice possessional catch by Jaden Clark, the sophomore. Yeah, Clark makes another big play. Uh, you know, it, it, I have to hard to believe. You said he's a sophomore. He's acting like a senior out there, making big plays. He had to go down to the ground to make that catch on fourth down. Uh, that takes a lot of guts. So going with a three wide receiver set. Excuse me, four wide receiver set. Here's the snap. And Doctor looked like a miscommunication between him and number 14, Rico Brown, was confused maybe if he was going to get the ball or not. But Penuchev almost had an interception there. Yeah, that was Cole Reed for St. Joe's. Uh, almost made the play on that ball. He was just a bit out of position, but very close to it. That would have been huge for this Marauders team. So they take out Brown. They substitute him out with another receiver. 
And there they go on a second down and 10. Ball's at their own 40 yard line. Three wide, snap, rolling out, pass is caught. Trying to stay on his feet past the 40, but only getting to around maybe the 41, maybe 42 yard line. It's Doctor there on the catch, but only short yardage here with a third down and about maybe eight yards to go. Yeah, you can tell Doctor's getting a little frustrated. He was talking to the ref about something. I'm not sure what, I mean, I think maybe about the ball spot. I think he wanted the forward progress from when he caught the ball, but they kind of marked it a little back from where he went down. But these Joe's defenders, fearless, going right for the legs of these Canisius receivers. Going four wide. In the backfield, number seven, that's Howard Dolson. Looking to the right side, passes caught by Brown, picking up the first down and more. And in the St. Joe's territory, down at the 47 yard line, a pickup of about, about 11 yards on the play and the Crusaders move the chains. You almost wonder if the Joes game plan defensively is here. We're gonna give them that little stuff. We're not gonna let you go behind us and then we're gonna stop you at the goal line. It's risky, it's a risky strategy in my opinion, but maybe they feel like if we can beat them up the middle, we feel good about our goal line stands and we just won't let you throw over the top of us. Well, staying with that same formation, this time Yancey in the backfield, and he's gonna get the pass and that goes behind him. It's Not realizing they gotta pick up the ball, that's live, that went behind the running back. We'll see who recovered it. Yeah, there was no whistle. It's going to stay with Kenesha. As what a, a fortunate break by the Crusaders. Yeah, nobody. I, 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 there were a Kenesha's guy there. There was a Joe's defender. And nobody quite realized that that was a live ball. And, you know, those Joe's players are right now kicking themselves for not going after it. I'll see what the official loss of yardage is on the play. Might be about a loss of 12, and it is. So second down, 22 yards to go. And this is exactly what Joe want, Joe's wants at least. He could give him the underneath stuff. Now going to get a timeout called. And it looks like it's going to be on Canisius with 521 remaining in the first half. Joe's still up on Canisius, 14-7. It's been a nice tight battle but so far it is Joe's that is out in front thanks to the great running game they've had so far from not only their running back Deion Anderson but their quarterback Aaron Jens Francis. And this is playing out exactly the, the way Joe's wants to be. They're not an average back team they're an option team that loves to run the ball and right now that's exactly what they're doing. So I think right here with about a little over five minutes go here in this first half any quick adjustment, you know, on the offensive side that maybe Canisius has to make to try to get this ball down the field? They got a long way to go, and even with that, they still got to find a way to get in the end zone and tie it up before the end of the half. Well, I, I think it, you know, they're doing a great job throwing the football, especially on the outside, but I think they got to find a way to get that running game going. If you're going to run the ball and get one to two yards or less every single time, that's exactly what Joe's wants. And uh, if you can figure out a way to get your running game going, you can get your offense going. Here's a pass play, trying to throw deep downfield, and it is incomplete. Not able to grab it was Jaden Clark. Do have another Marauder down on the field that was going against Clark on that one-on-one. -on -one. And I think they're gonna call a late hit on St. Joe's. I see a flag right where Penichev was knocked down. So I think that is going to, uh, that's a big gain right now for Canisius, although all eyes right now are on the St. Joe's player down in the secondary. I wasn't able to get a look at who that was. Yeah, so it's, it is rough in the passer on St. Joe's, a big break for them. We'll see, will they officially spot this ball? So it'll be an automatic first down, and we'll see will they officially move it. Looks like they'll have, um, I want to say the 44-yard line, St. Yeah. Joe's 44. St. Joe's 44-yard line. 
So as we, as uh, St. Joe Marauders still being attended to by the trainers, still down in the field around their 40-yard line. We'll take a break here in the broadcast booth. You're watching Western New York Athletics. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our First down and 10, Penichev with the pass. Getting it past the 40 and down to around the 36-yard line. Yeah, pass to the outside. Again, coming out of the break, you know, big break for Canisius on that roughing the passer call. They move into Joe's territory, and uh, you can see in that first play. Again, they're just sticking with that outside game, short passes. They believe their athletes are better than the guys that Joe's has on the outside. Not only that, you're also seeing those quick passes to where Penuchev doesn't have to put himself in a situation where he has to throw the ball downfield. They're, you know, defenders on St. Joe's are giving wide receivers like Clark, Rico Brown, and Doctor enough space to get some quick uh, curl routes going. And a nice tackling at the line of scrimmage as Howard Dolson was on the carry. See who that was that came up. It looked like that it was made the tackle. 56 Killian Vargas who made the play. I'm sorry, no, that's 56 Michael O'Grady. He's one of their top defensive ends. Uh, you know, he's really uh, just looking at my notes here. Uh, you know, he's strong, you know, he's slender, but he's very strong if you look at him, and he's very aggressive on defense. It looked like it may have been Peyton Brock too that was there on the tackle as well that wrapped that wrapped up Dolson. So third down, one yard to go. Penuchev, pass, incomplete. And that's that quick curl routes that Kinichas has been doing all game. This time, Brown just couldn't turn his head quick enough when the pass was thrown. So fourth down and one. Obviously a situation for them to go for it, but we'll see what they do here. Yeah, it looks like the timing was a little bit off on that play, but big fourth and one. You know that Kinichas is going to go for it. I wonder if they're going to go with uh, Dobson on that wildcat formation here. I have a sneaky suspicion they might do that. We haven't seen it yet today. We saw it a lot last week against Maritime where Dolson's going to line up in the shotgun and everybody else is just kind of in front of him. So Howard Dolson is back in the game in that wildcat formation. Here's the snap. Bulldozing through and gets more than enough for the first down. He's officially down at the 32 yard line, a pickup of three, more than enough to move the chains. Yeah, you know what, and <laughs> it looks like they're gonna get way away from it, but that's been one of their most, I think that may be their one successful running play all afternoon for Canisius. I'm surprised they don't stay in that and just try to get their running game going. It, you know, it's a different mentality when you have uh, everybody bunched together on the offensive line and they're just pushing forward. Sticking with the four wide receiver set. Brown motioning from right to left. Here's the snap. Penyuchev looking on his left side. Trying to throw downfield against Doctor. And corrals it in. And dives for a touchdown. But hold on, folks. We do have a penalty marker down into the backfield. What an effort by Mike Doctor, the wide receiver. But it's coming back. Oh, man. This Canisius crowd is so disappointed. Here. They already put the white stuff up, the blue crew. And, but what an unbelievable play by Doctor. I don't know if we have the replay of that at all. No, we don't have the replay of that, but still an unbelievable play by Doctor. He climbed over his man, took it from in front of him, took it from pretty much in front of his face and made the play a clean touchdown. But unfortunately, the holding is going to turn, uh, turn things around. 
a potential you got mossed opportunity all negated due to a holding penalty by Canisius's offensive line. That is a killer. And remember, they haven't had a ton of long passes, as you kind of alluded to a few plays ago. So Penachev wouldn't have to be in the pocket for so long against this big, uh, this is really good defensive line for Joes. Brown motioning from right to left. Penachev giving it to Doctor, makes the catch at around the 45 and taken down at the 44 yard line. And that was a statement tackle by Deion Anderson. We even see him make great plays on offense. That time he goes up against Canisius' top guy, Mike, Do Mike Doctor, who we've been talking about, and makes a big time tackle. Uh, you don't think uh, there was a little mess, a little extra message sent there. So this is now a second down and 23 yards. Going four wide, trips to the left side. Here's a pass that is caught. Trying to get some blocking he needs. And now they're penalty marker down as Clark brought in the catch. He's tackled at the 35-yard line. We'll see what this penalty is on. I wonder, I think that might be another late hit. Yeah, Penuchev did go down there well after he threw the ball. This yeah. Might be another I, roughing the passer. Yeah, another roughing the passer on Joe's. Not good by that. It, you, you, it's bad enough to have one of those on a driver in a game, let alone two just a couple plays back. That's something that the St. Joe's coaching staff needs to clean up right now. I see that player. I'm not sure if it was the same player on both, but they're taking the player who uh, committed the penalty just now. They just took him off the field. Uh, they need to correct that right now. You can't afford to make that mistake, especially after you got a big break from that holding call taking away the touchdown. Well, not only that, that's an automatic first down, so that was technically a 24-yard penalty. A little over two minutes go in the first half. With that four wide receiver set, the snap. Quick pass, caught. Looks like that's Clark at the 15-yard line. Taken down close to the 10-yard line. That's where they officially spot him. Looks like he should have enough for the first down. They haven't officially moved the chains yet, and now they do. He just got enough. Yeah, I want to go back to the play before. So what we missed with that roughing the passer call was a that screenplay, which Canisius loves to run. They'll throw it to Clark. They'll throw it to Dr. Well, where the receiver kind of cuts in after he catches the ball, cuts inside, and all the blockers uh, try to make plays for him. I'm sure Canisius will go back to that um, fairly soon. First and goal, 90 seconds to go in the first half. Four wide with Howard Dolson in the backfield. Pass is caught. And trying to get it inside. I think they might have gotten to the five-yard line. Pick up about five, but that clock keeps ticking. Right now, Joe's is playing that bend-don't-break defense. Uh, now's the time not to break. There's no more room to bend. Uh, those short passes, I know they've been trying to get up on them to make the tackles right away. Now you, you got to be there to knock the ball down. You can't let them catch it anymore. Uh, you got to knock the ball down or it's going to be six. Second and goal, 50 uh, seconds and counting. Penyachev looking, end zone, touchdown, Canisius. And just towards the end of the first half, they respond with a touchdown of their own with one point away from tying it up. Do have another injured St. Joe Marauder down on the field. It'll be official timeout. Yeah, trying to see, I missed who caught that touchdown. We're trying to figure out the booth who's on the far side. Um, but yeah, you can see there's uh, St. Joe's um, defender down, not good for Joe's. Uh, and of course, Canisius is going to have a chance to tie this game. I want to see Craig Kurzanski with one of the players that might have been Evan Dean that got the touchdown reception. It so is Evan Dean. Uh, I was just told it was Evan Dean who had the catch for the touchdown. Um, so that is now the second passing touchdown of the day for Penuchev. He went to Mike Doctor in the opening drive in the first quarter to get Kanishas up to a quick 7 to nothing lead. And they start it in the beginning of the game. They're finishing off here in the first half with a passing touchdown with a point after try of trying to tie it up. Yeah, this, uh, yeah, you know, and Kanishas uh, just stuck uh, – 
to the pass play. What was how many plays was probably probably like felt like 10, 12 plays on that one. All short passes and uh, pretty much all short passes, and they're able to get down the field and score. So penalty marker is down. The PAT is good. So St. Joe's was offsides. Did they make the point after try? Oh, no, I don't think so. Or, oh, I think they're going to give Canisius, they're going to accept it and go for two as the ball gets moved up to the one. So the point after try was good, but because of the offside on St. Joe's, it puts Canisius in a great spot here. They go in the Wildcat formation again. Successful on a fourth down opportunity. He tries to dive forward. Did he get it? St. Joe says he didn't. And official word is the two-point conversion is no good. St. Joe's still clings on to a one-point lead with 43.9 seconds to go in the first half. Do we have a replay of that? Uh, yeah, we do have a replay of the two-point conversion. Or no, this is the touchdown, so we'll, we'll run this again. I like this. Panachev looks looking to his left. He knows where his man is. And Dean there was wide open. I think he was a little lost. Uh, St. Joe's defenders lost him in there. I wonder if the player who was down may have been charged with covering him and something happened just before the snap or just as it happened where he missed that assignment. But Canisius takes advantage. Although, look what just happened right there. Canisius made the extra point. Penalty. Hey, let's try to go for two. Gamble doesn't pay off, though. Dolson misses, and Joe's retains the lead. And it's been a battle so far throughout this game that, you know, Francis, we expected from the start. Two touchdowns from both sides, all right now with a 14 to 13 lead with Canisius, excuse me, St. Joe's out in front. And, you know, it's something that we expected, you know, before the kickoff even happened. You know, I, I got to be honest, I, I thought Canisius was going to run away with this. I wasn't expecting an exact repeat of last year, even last week against Maritime, but I thought the Canisius line would be able to push around Joe's and be able to run the ball pretty decent. That's obviously not happening right now. Almost the exact opposite where they're not having any success running the ball and they're having to go to their passing attack, their quick passing attack to move the ball. Ball bounces right at the 20-yard line and it's picked up by Anspach. Trying to get some extra blocking as he goes past the 30 and officially taken down. Looks like at the 35-yard line. All right, so if you're St. Joe's, you don't have a huge passing attack. You're more of a running attack. So the question is, do we try some Hail Marys? Do we see if we can get Anderson on the outside for a couple big plays? Um, I, I think that's the big question. If you think you have something in your bag, or maybe... Do you do your own wide receiver screen? We haven't really seen any of Steve Hoskins on the offensive side. Obviously, he was hurt earlier. We don't know his status right now. Uh, but that could be an idea with 37 seconds to go in this first half. Or possible running back screen as well. You've seen that with a couple of teams in Western New York that have done a running back screen have been very successful with it. Yeah, we saw last week Micah Harry for Lancaster scored on a 31-yard halfback pass. So a wide receiver motioning from right to left. Here's a snap. Rolling out to the right side. Gents, he's just going to scramble and take it to the 40. And to the 45, and he is hit hard. And a penalty marker down is... Didn't look like from our angle, but the refs have the better one. I think he got that, hit out of bounds. I think he was hit out of bounds, and you know what? That hit was a little high, too, so and that could be either way. Either it's high or or late out of bounds, uh, but I think that's going to be an extra 15 yards for uh, this St. Joe's offense. And a good, you know, not a ton of penalties that have happened here in the first half, but a good amount of them have been personal ones. Had a couple rough in the passers, and now you get one with a hit out of bounds. Yeah, did they officially signal? Okay, I don't know. Did you see the signal, whether it was hit to the head or late hit out of bounds? Uh, I did not. It looked like the signal might have been, uh, might have been hit out of bounds because that's where he was initially going. It didn't look like it might have been helmet to helmet. But it was very close. You know what? Late hit out of bounds is obviously the easier call there because he was getting close to that tent. So the ball's at Canisius' 41-yard line. 
Going with two wide receivers. Dion in the backfield. Gents rolling out to the left side, firing it. Falls incomplete. And no penalty marker down. Anspach wanted a pass interference, but uh, it will fall incomplete. I don't really blame him either. It looks like the, can, the Canisius defender was getting a little handsy there, but what do I know? I'm up here. They're down on the field. Refs know way better than I do, uh, but that will be second down uh, for Joe. Still 24 seconds. I, you have to stick with the air, uh, but as you mentioned earlier, maybe a screen pass uh, to Anderson would be a good play. Feels like at this point, even though there's 24 seconds left and it's at the 41-yard line, feels like St. Joe's has some free will what they can do here. At least get it close enough to where, you know, if you don't get a touchdown, see what your kicker can do, get a get a field goal here, go up by a couple extra more points. Gents feeling the pressure, escaping the pocket, rolling out to the left side, and we'll fling this out of bounds for an incomplete pass. And that was textbook defense by Canisius. They had the pass rush right away. He tried to roll out to his left and couldn't find an open man downfield. Jake, we have a scoring update. I was telling you yesterday how excited I was for our Super Saturday lineup, and guess what? This game is close. The other game we're doing, Sweet Home Willies, tied 14-14 at the half. Another great game going on out there. Battle on the of the unbeatens out there, so Western New York Athletics bringing you two fantastic games right now. And then later at 7, we're going to have Olean at Falconer, Casadega Valley, Maple Grove. Uh, so fantastic games going on right now. We'll see if uh, Joes can take a bigger lead into the half. Snap and the give to Anderson. There he goes down to the 30 and tackled at around the 27, maybe 26-yard line. Clock stops at 8.7 seconds. Yeah, he gets out of bounds. Very smart to do because I don't know if they would have had a ton of time to get back to the line of scrimmage for a spike play. But you got about eight seconds. You got one left in you. So the question is, you try the screen. I, I think right now you try to do something away from Anderson's. Try to use Anderson as a decoy if I'm Coach Corona and get the ball to somebody else. Um, and, you know, something on the outside where the defense isn't looking to try to get a touchdown here. So right now, all the huddle for St. Joe's. They're going to decipher what they want to do here. Looks like they might have an opportunity for two plays if they get a quick pass off and just go out of bounds. Craig Krasanski is going to have to call timeout. So with 8.7 seconds left, we'll take a quick break in the action. We'll be right back. St. Joe's Canisius football live on Western New York Athletics. now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house we're confident we'll find your dream home howard hannah home happens here sometimes it just isn't your day we all need a little help from time to time that's why we're committed to providing safe quick and cost-effective care and we keep it simple just walk in we're here for you learn more today welcome back everyone to western new york athletics this is Timeouts are done. Both teams are back out of the field. 8.7 seconds. Balls at Canisius' 25-yard line. Joe's up 14-13 with a golden opportunity to try to get more points on the board. Let's see what they do here. Here's a snap. Fake. Gents. Rolling. Pressure. Sacked. And a timeout call with 1.8 seconds left. Hard to tell who... Wrapped him up and brought him down, but that was a crucial sack by Canisius. Yeah, I think the ball actually went out of bounds, so they stopped the clock with 1.8 left. Uh, but, yeah, that def that time the defeat deep, uh, the defensive line for Canisius was able to get in the backfield, and Jens really wasn't able to set his feet. So it won't be a sack, but penalty is on St. Joe's. So it be intentional grounding. Yeah, I'm surprised at that one. That looked like he, he fumbled the ball out of bounds. I really didn't see that he attempted a pass there. Uh, and not to mention, it looked like he was out of the tackle box. And this year they implemented the new rule with uh, that you can, if the quarterback is outside the tackle box, they can throw the ball away and not have it count as intentional grounding. 
even if there's not a uh, receiver in the vicinity. Yes, um, especially like because the idea is is like if there's if they're running if they're rolling out to the outside and there's no one there, rather than like force the QB to hold on to it with somebody bearing down on him, he can get rid of the ball and then you know it you know little bit of kind of a safety thing there to take away those hits. Um, but call an intentional grounding nonetheless. I, it doesn't make much. I mean, at this point, it doesn't make that much of a difference, um, you know, because it's not a turnover. So Joe's can still line up, try to do the same thing again, uh, have Jens throw to the end zone. Um, I don't know if uh, it looks like Steve Hoskins right now is still uh, being attended to under the tent on the sidelines. They don't have him, but they have Robert Anspach who's one of their top receivers still on the field. Maybe they try to target him in the end zone. A bit of a Hail Mary play. Uh, that's certainly an option for them. They go two wide receivers. Anderson in the backfield. See what they do here. Here's a snap. Rolling out to the left. Blocking, blocking. Deep shot downfield. And it's a nice... Catch attempt, but it was well out of bounds. Beautiful attempt by Anspach, and fall, ball falls incomplete. And, folks, that is officially the end of the first half of this big high school rivalry in western New York, St. Joe's and Canisius. Joe's out in front on their home turf, 14-13. You are now part of this. This is how your school Jump in with two feet. Your experience your time here will be defined by that investment, by that decision. You've chosen the more challenging path, the path with more growth, the life-changing path. It may be marked with challenge and adversity. The fact it will be that we are all here to help you. We are part of an incredible network of schools and educational projects across the world. 3.3 million students will go to school this fall, from middle school to the greatest universities in the world, eventually by the Jesuits and the Republicans. 100 million people make up the alumni of Jesuit schools in 90 different countries. This place is special. Our network is special. Jump in with you. St. Joseph's Collegiate Institute is a Lasallian Catholic all-boys high school that was founded on the teachings of St. John Baptist de La Salle in 1861 by the Brothers of the Christian Schools. As the oldest college preparatory school in Western New York, St. Joseph's mission is to transform the lives of students from diverse backgrounds to academic excellence and care for the whole person. Our Lasallian community strives to develop each student's unique talents in preparation for college and for life. At St. Joe's, students are provided with the best in-class academics, championship athletic programs, and an array of visual and performing arts. Students from diverse backgrounds are welcomed and challenged to perform to the best of their ability and inspired to achieve their goals while making good choices and serving their greater community. Rooted in mission and respect, the St. Joe's experience transforms boys into gentlemen of integrity. St. Joe's is renowned for excellence not only in the classroom, but also in athletics. For decades, the Marauders have been a dominant force in Western New York high school sports. Our championship athletic programs are additional opportunities to foster brotherhood, build character, and teach hard work. The Robert T. Scott AFSC Athletic Field Complex is a 183,000 square foot turf field with a multi-purpose, all-weather synthetic playing surface that allows our athletes to practice and compete right on campus. Additional facilities for our students and athletes include two gyms and a fitness center that houses collegiate level strength and conditioning equipment. St. Joe's offers 18 sports with 41 teams, providing lots of opportunity for anyone interested in athletics. Last year, 30 athletes from the class of 2020 went on to play sports in college and received over $500,000 in athletic scholarships. All of this, our academics, extracurriculars, faith formation, service, athletics, and arts, occurs in a community that is a true brotherhood 
one in which you build lifelong relationships with both your peers and your teachers, and that allows you to explore your interests and discover your strengths. We would like to invite you to join this community and become a marauder where we promise you will always be welcomed, challenged, and inspired. Learn more about St. Joe's by visiting our state-of-the-art campus. To schedule a personal tour, spend a day on campus with our Marauder for a Day program, and learn more about our many admissions opportunities. Visit www.sjci.com admissions. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here. I love being home. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you say this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. <sighs> we don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For all your insurance questions, call the Wolf at 835-WOLF. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today, and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. Life can be full of surprises, but not always the good kind. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. All right, welcome back. Western New York Athletics. It's Canisius St. Joe's. It's the Marauders. 14-13 to 13 over Canisius. I am joined right now by newly inducted St. Joe's Hall of Famer, Naaman Roosevelt, a uh, legendary player here at St. Joe's. Uh, Naaman, uh, what does it mean, we'll start with this, to be inducted into the St. Joe's Hall of Fame? I mean, it was a blessing. I mean, just to walk around the campus and see the new stadium and see the new field. I mean, this is awesome. So it was definitely, man, I, I appreciate everything they did for me. It made me love the game. You know, I came here and I love football. So, and, it, and I've been able to pursue it for a long time. So I'm excited and it was fun last night. All right, tell us where you are right now. I know you played for a while in for Saskatchewan in the CFL. Mm -hmm. What is Naaman Roosevelt doing right now? So right now I'm just training. I'm helping out, also helping out at uh, Hilbert College, just helping the young guys out there. But I want to get into college football. So that's my main goal right now is to get into college football. Um, I did a little coaching in in Canada this past year, just helping out up there, just learning, you know, the, the ins and outs of coaching. Man, coaching is tough, though. I, I ain't going to lie. I, I thought being a player was tough, but coaching is ten times harder. There's a lot more work. So I'm excited to, to really get on that on that side of the, uh, of the game and just teach kids how to, you know, how to play the game. I know sometimes you've been back in Western New York, sometimes you're in Western New York. So mm -hmm. how, where are you living right now? How often do you get to come here? 
So, so I usually sometimes I'll be back and forth when the, uh, during the off seasons when I'm up in Canada. But now I just moved back here, so I'm staying by UB North, and uh, so I've been over there training at uh, just at UB helping the receivers out, and just a, I got a bunch of guys that you know that go to St. Joe's and go to St. Francis, and a couple of Canadian guys I train also. So I'm just trying to you know just spread that knowledge that I learned you know these past these past years, and you know I'm excited for what I've been seeing. I mean St. Joe's has been doing awesome, man, and you know I know I already know Canisius had a good team, but I'm, it's good to see that uh, St. Joe's also is. Uh, you know, came ready to play today. You were in this rivalry. You told me that you never lost to Canisius yeah, in your time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what is this, for someone who played in it, tell yeah. me what this rivalry is like. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it's one of the, the whole week is just, you know, you got the pet rallies, you got people talking, you got the fans that come back around, you got the old alumni that come, and it's just all week it's like, all right, no matter what happens, you beat that team. You know, you beat Canisius, no matter what happens, you beat them. So we, uh, so every, all week is exciting. So I know they've been excited, you know, for the past week, these kids, and, you know, to go out here and, and showcase what they've been doing, it's been awesome. So to be in these games, I mean, it's just always, always, you know, it's going to be a sold-out crowd. It's going to be stacked. So it's come out here and perform it, you know, do your best. All right, I want you – you mentioned you did a little bit of coaching, so I want you to put yourselves in Coach Corona's cruise right, shoes right now. You're up 14-13 to 13 over your rival, a team you haven't beaten yet in a long time, since 2019 and the recent series you've lost to. What is your message to the St. Joe's Marauders right now? Hey, I'm going to say – I'm going to go on halftime and say, hey, zero zero. We go out here and we play our game. We've been doing a good job of, of uh, driving the ball and playing good defense, so – Keep sure, keep make sure you can play good defense and also keep driving. Keep keep help, keep having long drives, long drives, and keep making plays. And once you get in the red zone, you gotta score touchdowns. That's the thing. Score touchdowns when you get in the red zone. All right, Damon. Uh, just real quick, one player for Joe for each team who has stood out to you so far. For for Joe's, it's the quarterback number seven. I mean, he's been doing a great job of of, of managing the game. He's been uh, running the ball. He's been throwing the ball. He's been. I mean, he's been the team. So. When you got a quarterback that can do both, I mean, it's, 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 it's special. And uh, that catch I saw with number three on Kenesha's, man, that was sick. They took it back, but that was, that was, that was one of them catches, them, them uh, Randy Moss catches where you, uh, you go over somebody's head and catch one of those. But, I mean, they've both been doing a good job. It's been a lot of great plays, a lot of great, uh, you know, a lot of great talent out here. So I'm excited. All right, Naaman, thank you for joining us. Uh, St. Joe's Hall of Famer now, former UB product, Naaman Roosevelt. Actually, you know what, before we end up, I want to ask you, Joe Licata is now at Valencia yeah, South. Yeah. How does that feel? I mean, it's good for Joe, man. I, I'm excited. I went to the first game and checked him out. And, you know, Joe, is uh, he does a great job of calling plays. I mean, I've seen him call a, a, a hook and ladder play, and it was, <laughs> it was just, you know, Joe is funny with that, man. He makes a lot of plays up, you know, in his head, and he's a great, he's been a, you know, he's a great quarterback, and he was a great quarterback at Buffalo also, so. I mean, he does a great job of what he does, and I'm excited to, uh, you know, see what, how his coaching career goes. All right, that will end it. Naaman, thank you for joining us. The Saint, newly inducted St. Joe's Hall of Famer, Naaman Roosevelt, thank you for joining us at the half. Uh, we'll be right back after the break. It's Joe's Canisius lead, leading Canisius 14-13. to 13. We'll be back in second half action in just a little bit. Thank you. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. When you're ready to buy a home, start your search at howardhanna.com. You'll be the first to see new listings, find similar properties, and connect with a local Howard Hanna agent. Get started today at howardhanna.com. And welcome back, everyone, to Western New York Athletics. Quick shout-out to Naaman Roosevelt, uh, Naaman Roosevelt, who got a chance to Hop on the broadcast with Francis Beck to talk about his induction into the St. Joe's Hall of Fame. Real quick, you know, you know, I've only been covering high school football. I think now it's maybe three, maybe four years. So immediately when I saw him, I immediately thought of the Hail Mary catch he had against Temple in 2008, the same year that UB football won the MAC 
championship. But Francis, he wasn't the only one that got inducted into the St. Joe's Athletic Hall of Fame. Yeah, we had a couple of guys. I want to pull up my notes. Um, we can pull it up on our screen, um, our top one. We want to get the pictures of them up. Um, it is James Bassett, uh, uh, graduated in 14. John Greer, you can see, played basketball and football. Uh, James Bassett played hockey and lacrosse. Also, Naaman Roosevelt, as we mentioned, played football and basketball. Mark Simon, as well, a uh, longtime coach here from 2000 to 2018 to the basketball team. And then the 1989-90 and 2005-06 basketball teams, they were inducted into the St. Jones Hall of Fame last night. Big weekend for the folks here on Kemmore Avenue. Yeah, absolutely. And not only a big inductee lineup, for that St. Joe's Athletic Hall of Fame, but just like any other St. Joe's Kinesis rivalry, you gotta have a huge turnout, and we have that. Left oh, side, all Kinesis, right side, all St. Joe's, and we got standing room on the far side of the end zones as well. Can't ask for a better turnout than what we're getting so far. No, and that's what you always get with this event. You know, you, I'm sure if, uh, you know, the start of the game, you, I got here about over almost three hours early to make sure I get a parking spot right across from the driveway of here. But there's people, I'm sure, blocked down here for, parked down here for blocks to get into this game. And St. Joe's starting off the ball in the second half. Tackled down right at the, past the 25. They officially put them at the 30-yard line, and that's where the Marauders' offense will start off for their first possession in the second half. And Francis Phenomenal job on the run game. We mentioned it a couple of times with Jens and Anderson. They had a little bit of a hiccup there towards the end of the first half, and they're trying to put more points on the board. But now it's gut check time. Can you try to get another touchdown right away to set the tone the rest of the way? I I think, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, uh, St. Joe's, uh, you know, they had some good momentum in the first half. Uh, they need to continue it into the second. We saw Canisius, they scored late in the first half. So Joe's needs to grab the momentum back to start the second. Anderson in the backfield, two wide receivers both to the left side, and they give it to him, trying to run it up. But this time he is stuffed by a couple of Canisius defenders. One of them that was in on the tackle in that pileup was number, I think it was number 46 there. That was Hunter Jancy, the junior. Yeah, Jancy, the son of Eric Jancy, who's on this coaching staff. He's also longtime coach, state winning cha championship winning coach in North Tonawanda, coach at Orchard Park in Springville as well. So he makes a big play. And I think that's one of the big, most uh, positive defensive plays for Canisius, I think, this game. Sticking with the same formation, loss of one yard on that play. Try to give it to Jantz, and this time going nowhere once more into the backfield, losing more yards. That was Howard Dolson, the defensive end, also running back, able to wrap up Jentz and bring him down. Yeah, you can see right now that this Canisius defense, especially their defensive line, just looks inspired. Coach Rosansky might give them one heck of a halftime speech. They're ready to go in the second half, and they're winning the line in the trenches. They're winning the game in the trenches. Third down, 15 yards to go. Got to get to their 40-yard line to pick up the first. Snap. Gents. Screen pass. There it is to Anderson with a lot of room. And extra blocking as well to the 40. Picking up the first down and more. And down at around the 46-yard line. A pickup of 21 yards. There's the running back screen pass that we've been waiting to see. Yeah, you've been waiting for it all game long. You know what? The What is the old saying? Big time players make big time plays and big time moments. But you saw it. Past two plays, the easiest defensive line wins it. They need a big play. They go to Anderson on the screen. He's able to bounce off for a big gain. It shifts the momentum back to Joe's just a little bit. And that was something in their arsenal that they've been waiting to do, and it fooled that Crusader defense. After the Crusaders had two stops, tackles for losses, they come up big. St. Joe's with the running back, Anderson, to push this towards the midfield marker and knocking a little bit in the Kinesis territory. 9.50 remaining to go in the third quarter and counting. Now we got a penalty marker down. No, Excuse I, me, no, it's going to be a timeout. Yeah, the Kinesis sideline saw something that they did not like. I saw the coaches uh, were rushing out on the field. Uh, they called that timeout. They 
saw their defense was not lined properly there and did not want to suffer another big play. So 9.45 left to go here in the third quarter. We'll stay here on the broadcast side of things. And Francis, you mentioned it a little bit earlier in this game. Uh, Bennett and Orchard Park are in action. Sweet Home and Will East are in action. I believe it's at Sweet Home that they're, yeah, they're having a, yep. a close battle, just like we're seeing here at St. Joe's. And then got a big one coming up tonight. Yeah, Olean at Falconer, Cassidy, Gamet, Melly, Valley, Maple Grove. That's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, big <laughs> say battle. That, say in, that ten uh, times fast. I know, really. In uh, <laughs> Class B2 action, uh, these uh, that'll be certainly a great game. So tune in for that game at 7 o'clock. This is really one of the best Saturday schedules I've seen in a very long time. You know, we had at 1 o'clock, I think the game is coming to a close pretty soon, Bennett and Orchard Park. We saw Bennett take care of business, but the battle of two of the top teams in double A as well. This time they flipped the wide receiving core. Was on the left side, now moving to the right. Here's a snap, here's the give. And Gents just gonna take the L on that play and just go walk out of bounds. He had no blocking help on that play. Yeah, it looks like they were, I don't know what was going on there. Walker was just kinda left all alone there. He looks like an imposing figure there, 6'5", 245. He looked like 6'7", 260 to Aaron Jentz. But, yeah, Walker was there, and Jentz just kind of had to take it out of bounds so he wouldn't get mauled over. But, um, yeah, it looks like there may have been a missed assignment there for St. Joe's. It, I don't think Walker was supposed to be all alone in that space. So Anderson right next to his quarterback, Jentz. That was a loss of two on that first down carry. Here's the snap, the fake. Now trying to run it up the gut. And regaining that lost yardage on the previous play and a couple of yards more. Set up a third down and about eight yards to go. Yeah, simple run at the middle. This Kenesha's defensive line, though. I don't know if it was adjustment. These guys are just playing more inspired, but they're doing a very good job at the point of attack, uh, getting in the middle and not really letting themselves get gashed when there's a run up the middle. So Jets and, Jets and Anderson both showing some good, strong efforts in the running game. But lately, right now, Kenesha has been able to sniff them out, not able to allow those big yardages that we have seen in the ground game so far. But here's a big third down and eight. Two wide receivers set, both split on the left and right. Here's a snap. Draw play. Jets, can he get the blocking? He can. Hurdles one player. Gets the first down. And in a Crusader territory, the senior, Aaron Jentz, making a big play to move the chains. I, I got to be honest. I was a little nervous there. I saw him make that jump, and I thought that ball was going to come out. It looked a little loose, but he's able to hold on. Big play for the Marauders. I think the other than the Anderson play, that's the biggest play on their drive. And they get that running game going up the middle, sort of on that left side. That's going to be the key for the St. Joe's offense. If they can get that back going like it was in the first half, it's going to be a tough day for this Canisius Crusaders defense. Nothing's more demoralizing on a defense when you have that much yards to pick up the first down and your quarterback is just able to swallow up all that yardage, moving the chains, tiring the defense out just a little bit. But now he's back in that shotgun formation, takes a snap. This time Zay Anderson needs the extra blocking, able to shake off one defender. And he's grabbed it around the back. Now he's taken down. And it looks like a flag was thrown as well. Don't see who the initial tackler was, but you saw that horse cow tackle. He got tagged a little bit, but we'll see what the official penalty is as a couple of the refs are going to have a quick discussion. Yeah, there was a flag in the area of holding, and then all of a sudden we just saw another one thrown after the play was over. So I don't know. There was a pet, they thought there might have been a late hit or maybe something was said afterwards, but it'll be really interesting to see how they dole this one out. So Krasansky giving a quick pep talk over to Doctor who brought down Anderson. He did tug him a little bit in that horse collar area when trying to take down Anderson. I see the officials right now talking to Coach Corona, so maybe this is going to be on Canisius. They are asking him what he's going to accept or whatever. This is very interesting here what is going to happen. One ref talking to the main head referee. Let's hear the Kenesha student section cheering up a bit. 
Now St. Joe's here at student section trying to cheer up as well, trying to respond back, but still having a discussion here what these penalties are. I mean, I mean at this point, <laughs> you know, I, I would assume I would in. assume it would be possibly offsetting penalties if there was two of them. That, that's what I, I was thinking, maybe a holding on Joe's and then maybe a Canisius player said something or here, here let's see what it is. So there was two penalties on St. Joe's. One was a personal foul. That was declined. But the holding penalty is going to be the big kicker because, remember, in high school football, wherever that holding penalty is, that's where they start the ball and they add it, they tack on an extra 10 yards. So that had more yardage of loss. So we'll see what they officially put the down and how much to go to pick up the first. And I think that personal foul may have been after the play I have a feeling something was said the way that flag was thrown. So Joe's players got to keep their cool, especially with these officials. You, you can't afford to have penalties like that in a game like this. The ball's at the midfield marker. Looks like the, by the first down chain gain it has, they got to get to the 31 for the first. So definitely a long way to go. First and 19 and a big job. Wrapping up Anderson and taking him down. That was number 54, the junior, Aiden Mecca. Yeah, another play by this, uh, you know, Phoenicia's defense read the read it right away. It looks like they're having doing a better job of reading the fakes and non-fakes between Jens and Anderson. And they were in the backfield to get they were, they got him right at the line of scrimmage, Anderson. Just a little over seven minutes remaining in the third quarter. Still 14 to 13 is our score between Canisius and St. Joe's. Second down, 19, no positive or negative yardage on the previous play. Gents feeling the pressure, chucking it downfield, and it falls incomplete. Anderson there as the intended receiver, and it was number 20. LaShawn Anderson, the junior free safety, able to break up the pass. Yeah, Jens had a little pressure in his face, but it was still not a badly thrown ball. But I, it, there was just too much, uh, too much, uh, too much coverage, too well covered by the Canisius defender for Anderson to bring it down. That would have been a very tough catch for him. So another third and very, very long coming up for the Marauders. Two wide receivers set. Anderson into the backfield. Here's the snap. Looking to the left side. Down the middle. Feeling pressure. And is sacked. Ball is on the ground. Did Canisius recover it? They did. As he was getting spun around, taken down, he coughed up the ball, and the Crusaders' defense dives on it. And with 6.56 remaining in the third quarter, they have a chance to retake their lead that they haven't had in a long time. Yeah, you know, this uh, Canisius, this Joe's offensive line, they were missing assignments there. There were Canisius defenders in the backfield right away. Jens really had nowhere to go. And he was, if you looked at it, those are some bigger guys. He was having trouble looking over the defensive linemen who were coming his way as he was trying to get out of it. Uh, of course, he was trying to spin away, did a little too much, and lost the football. So big opportunity for Canisius to retake the lead. Now comes out their junior quarterback, Nicholas Penuchev. End round play to Jaden Clark. Past the 40 to the 35. Now he's going from right to up the gut. To around the 30 yard line and tackled at around the 28 yard line. A pickup of about 12 and a Canisius first down in one play. Perfect play call by Coach Krasanski. You're coming off the turnover. You can tell momentum's heading all your way. What play do you want to do? End around is always good because the defense is going to be aggressive. They're going to want to get that guy in the backfield right away. End around kind of fakes him out. Clark had tons of room to run. That wasn't the first time they utilized that end around play. They had it in the first half as well that worked to their advantage. Penuchev fires one. It's caught. Looks like it's Doctor on the catch. Tackled at around the inside the 20. 
I want to say maybe the 18 yard line. If he did, that'd be enough for a first down. And they move the chains, he got enough. It, oh, I'm really surprised in the second half that Joe's uh, secondary didn't change, didn't make any changes as far as how they're covering this wide re these uh, wide receiving corps for Canisius. They're still playing off, man. I'm surprised they didn't try to do press, get some you know, contact with them at the line, throw off those routes, and maybe give time to, for your defensive line to get in the backfield against Penichev. Going four wide. Here's the snap. Looking. Pass. Caught. And inside at the 15, tackle it around, I want to say maybe to the 13 yard line. Looked like that was number 26, Evan Dean, who had the touchdown reception in the first half. I'm just looking at the Canisius sideline right now. I'm seeing Kevin Walker, the defensive end. He is with the trainer right now trying to walk off something. We'll keep an eye on that. He Remember, he had a big play on the last drive. Uh, I, this Crusader team needs him in uh, go full go in the second half. So it looked like we had an injured Marauder, so they had an official timeout to make sure he was out on the field. So one of the Marauders substituted into the onto the defensive side. Second down and five. Four wide. Penucheb firing. Caught. Hit hard. Clark there on the catch, gaining about a couple more yards and inching first, a uh, closer to a first down. And you know what, if you're Canisius, if Joes is gonna continue to play off the ball, let's just take those small, little short hitches all day long. Because right now you're completing them, you're getting three, four yards, and that's all you really need. Pick up of about four, third down and one to go. Less than five minutes now remaining in the third quarter. See what they go here. Trips bunch to the right side. Clark all by himself, one on one. Let's see who called this I timeout. I think that was Canisius. That's two timeouts already for Canisius in the second half, and we're only halfway through this third quarter. You wonder if that's going to bite back to, in a close game like this, if that could come back to Hana. 4.41 remaining in the third quarter. We'll take a break in the action. You're watching Western New York Athletics. I love being home. We realize now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house. We're confident we'll find your dream home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Welcome back, everyone, to Western New York Athletics. Quick score update around Western New York coming from Kenmore West. They are down 14-13 midway in the third quarter. Motioning from left to right, Penuchev feeling the pressure, gonna try and scramble to the corner of the end zone, and he'll dive in for a touchdown for the Crusaders. Nicholas Penuchev, the junior, helping Kanishas grab their first lead since the first quarter. You're gonna see on the replay here, nobody on the right side for that St. Joe's defense. Penuchev chanting a little bit of his counterpart, Jens, takes off and is able to get in Sneaks into the quarter of the end zone for the play. I think we had Jen score similarly on the court in that very corner. Right. Tie for the pollen. Uh, so Panachev kind of returning the favor, gives Canisius back their lead. This is going to be important here. Remember, Canisius missed on their two point conversion try at the end of the first half. Uh, they made the extra point, got a penalty, went for two, missed it. We'll see. It looks like they're going to go for two. This could be crucial here. See if they can get it to seven points. Penichev takes the snap, passes caught, and dropped it. Tender receiver was Clark. Tried to crowd it in, but fortunately could not. So it stays a five-point lead with 4.33 remaining in the third quarter. But we'll stay here on the broadcast real quick. And we'll talk about the junior quarterback for Kanisha's Nicholas Penichev. Francis, when I spoke to Craig, uh, Craig Krasansky, 
head coach for Kinesis. Penichev was one of the players that you didn't know heading into the season if he was going to be the starting quarterback right away. It was between him and Vinny Zimmerman. And it took until that Erie game, their season opener, to where he got a shot. And then from the rest of the way, Krasanski has given Penichev the starting role since. And he's shown to be one of the best quarterbacks here in Western New York. Yeah, he's 36 of 60, 437 yards, five TDs coming into this one. You know what? There's nothing splashy about him. He just does a bunch of things well. You know, he sits in the pocket. He's accurate. He hits his guys on time. He knows the athletes he has on the outside, so he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to be Superman out there. His job, he's kind of the distributor. Get the ball to my guy in the right spot. Let them make a play. Well, I would definitely, you know, you mentioned about splashy plays. I mean, he did one right there. He's not known to being that scrambler type of quarterback. In fact, that rushing touchdown, that's the first one he's ever had, first one on the season for him. All right, we have another scoring update. Willie Sweet Home tied at 28 late in the third quarter. The ball covered by the Marauders, setting him up in good field position. As you just heard about the scoring update between Sweet Home and Will East, another big battle. Heard about Will East, about what type of football program they have this year. Looks like they're going to have a dominant year, and Sweet Home just showing just as well how they can compete if not you know, try to get away a big win at home. Well, the, the Class A2 division is turning into one of the toughest, I think, right now in Section 6. And at the top, you have the three-horse race, Willie, Sweet Home, and McKinley. And McKinley, while they're still undefeated, uh, they had a close one with North Tonawanda, a team who both Willie and Sweet Home took care of. So we could very well talking about the, that game, Sweet Home and Willie's decide who wins that Class A2 division and possibly gets the number one seed in the Class A playoffs. Jen's out on that shotgun formation with his teammate Anderson. Fake it to him, rolling out to the right, feeling the pressure right away, and it's caught. Tiptoeing and getting one full feet down, and a big first down is there in Kenesha's territory. That is caught by number 11, Javier Torres, the senior. Yeah, Torres, I'm not even, uh, he doesn't even have any receiving. That might be his first catch of the season so far. I'm not seeing any on their max preps page. Uh, so big catch there by the senior. Makes it an important play for this Joe's team. They need to answer back on this drive, and that play is going to keep this drive alive. Oh, he's staying out there along with and Spock, both next to each other. And I don't think, I think he's in because Steve Hoskins is still on the sideline. Gents, draw play, getting the extra blocking, and there he goes. Can he get one more? Getting up the middle, and Gents responds with a touchdown of his own. But we do have a penalty marker down, and it's been called back due to a holding. Oh, you saw it. it that was a just great run up the right side. It was perfect. It was put together almost perfectly. It had Anderson right in front of him. Gets the final block. Unfortunately, though, it is going to come back due to holding uh, Coach Corona not having out. He's made his way onto the field over by the 40, talking the official. Certainly not happy about that call. But if you're Joes, take a deep breath. You know you can break it off. You saw Anderson earlier. You just did it then. There's no reason why you can't do it again. You just hold on to your block the right way. Don't hold them from behind. Hold them from in front of them, and you can have another big play. And you've been having some success moving the ball up the middle. So take a deep breath. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Move on to the next play. And that's not the first time this game we've seen a touchdown negated due to a holding penalty. That happened with Kenesha's. That beautiful catch by Mike Doctor, and he dove into the end zone, but unfortunately it was a holding call on Kenesha's offensive line that negated it. Now you get one that comes back to St. Joseph's favor and a need to try and get you know, this lead back. And, and remember, after that Canisius penalty a few plays later, Canisius did score to end the half, so there's no reason why Joes can't still score on this drive. Anderson bumping, spinning, and there he goes. 30, 20, one man to beat the 10, and down at around the Seven yard line, what a big run by Dion Anderson. 
I'm going to say it again. Big time players make big time plays at big time moments. They needed a big time play in that moment. Uh, big holding wall, wiped out the touchdown. What does he do? Very next play, Anderson gets the ball, breaks to the outside the other way, and gets down inside the 10. Deion Anderson put on playing the game of his life right now. Might have been a picked up of about 40, I believe that was 48 yards on the carry. It looks like Dan Anderson's on the sideline. He's fine. He's just getting some water. Well-deserved water. Now it's up to his teammates to finish off this drive. And right there replacing him in the backfield is Jackson Keller. Here's the snap. Gents, draw play again. Can he get the extra blocking? He dies forward to get some positive yardage. That wasn't the blocking he needed. He was immediately in the face of Dyrell Howard Dolson. He had to dive forward to at least get some positive yardage. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on there. We saw that earlier when Jens had to go out of bounds and lost some yards. I don't know what that play is supposed to be, whether he's supposed to be left on block, but it doesn't seem like maybe because it's on the short side of the field, you know, it, walk, he's so big. Walker and Dotson are so big. You know, there's really, it's hard to go around them. So it was a pickup of four yards, though. So second and goal. Under center, Jens, two wide receivers set. And Kanishas jumped. So from inside the for half the distance, I believe, and they'll get a reset the down. So a big play for Joes, and uh, we'll see what they try to do here. I don't know if that was either Mason Allnut that jumped or maybe number 60, Patrick Sullivan. Yeah, I think it was uh, Sullivan 60 because he saw he wasn't happy after that play. He was mad at himself. It's two yards go for the touchdown. And hit hard and immediately. Oh, did we have any chance we have a replay of that? And it no, was oh. the little guy, Nizel Lash, the junior at five foot nine, bringing the boom. Uh, he didn't look very little. He looked pretty big from my end. Uh, I, I certainly, uh, I'm sure he didn't look that. He, he looked. I'm sure he felt much bigger to whoever was carrying the ball. Was that what uh, Ansbach? I forgot. Who was the ball carrier in that play? Oh, it was Jackson Keller. It was Keller. I, I think he uh, felt much bigger than that on the end of that play. But. So losing two yards on third and goal. Back to the draw play. Gents trying to juke to the outside, and he will just walk it in for a St. Joe's touchdown. Oh, touchdown on there, and you know what? That was set up. Great blocking by Anderson. Subs back into the game, and they use him as the lead blocker on the left side, is able to beat the linebacker, and then Gents, all he has to do is just go Go to the corner, and he had all maroon coloring in the end zone. So that is now the third rushing touchdown of the game for St. Joe's. All of them coming on the ground. Second one on the day for Gents. It's now 20 to 19. Uh, formation changed from left to right. Here's the snap. Nice little toss play and getting the two point conversion. That was number 13, Isaac Gwit. Looked like it was going to go into the backfield for Keller, but no, no, no. You saw Gwit in the backfield as well. Gave him the nice toss, fooled that Kanisha's defense. And they're up now 22-19. You thought it was going to Keller. I thought it was going to Keller. I'm telling you, the Kanisha's defense thought it was going to Keller. But then they do the quick toss to Gwen. Um, <laughs> Just a little, just little short toss. I don't think anyone was expecting it. And Gwent walked in for the two-point conversion. 22-19, three-point lead. Remember, Canisius has missed on two two-point tries in this game. We'll see if that comes back to haunt them as we have only three minutes really left in this third quarter. So we'll stay here on the broadcast booth. And boy, what a game that we've had so far. What a close battle we have had in this game between St. Joe's and Kinesias, and we've had basically everything. We've had amazing catches downfield, some big run gains from both sides, both touchdowns being negated due to the penalties, and then in those insane drives, they've both ended up with touchdowns as well. Can't ask for a more entertaining high school football game right here on Western New York Athletics. I will say this. If you are Kinesias, you've played in this before. Second week, they faced Aquinas, one of the top teams, excuse me, out in Rochester, and you won that game 14-13. to 13. So you're used to 
playing close games. You're used to winning close games. And now it's the fourth quarter. Can they come back and get a score on this next drive? Henry Murphy running up, squib kick, and Canisius will recover it immediately at their own 45-yard line. I, I'm back and forth on whether that was a squib or they tried to onside. You know, I think it's one. I think it's one of those things where they just hope where looks like it's a squib, but then they just hope it just bounces off a Canisius player and they just recover it. Yeah, which I don't. You know, I really don't mind at this juncture. Um, but remember, Canisius is a well-coached team. They're going to have very good hands. It's not like you're going to – you have a tough time fooling Canisius. It's like one of those teams, like Lancaster, those well coached teams. You can't really fool them out there. Penyachev in the shotgun formation. Pass is caught. Pass the 45 to the midfield marker and taken down at around the 46 yard line. And then once again, Evan Dean in that slot receiver getting a lot – of the bulk here in the passing game so far. Had that touchdown, like I mentioned earlier in the first half, and Penichev's gone to him a little bit. Yeah, you know, I have to, I have to you know, good job by Penichev. That defensive end for St. Joe's was about six feet in the air, and Penichev still got that ball high enough to get it to Dean, and Dean was able to bring it down and get a couple yards. Snap, look, smack down, and falls incomplete. Good job by St. Joe's defensive line to put their hands up and deflect the pass. If it doesn't work once, try it again. That's Dory and Buckley going up again to knock down the pass. That time he's successful, making it third and about three for Canisius. So third and three ball at St. Joe's 48 yard line. Going four wide here. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Penichev all by himself. Looking, looking, deep shot downfield, has a man wide open! And Dean could not corral it in, and it will fall incomplete. A wonderful diving effort nonetheless, but I'll bring up fourth down, three yards to go for the first. Penichev uh, saw his man Dean. He got a step on the defender trying to get him, and that ball was just a bit out of reach. It reminded me of in the third quarter, Jalen Clark last week against Maritime made a similar play. Ball was a little bit overthrown, but Clark was able to extend a bit forward and come up with a catch. That time Dean comes up just short. Actually, really, he had it, I think. He just couldn't hold it all the way to the ground. No stick with that shotgun formation. Four wide receivers set, here we go. And they got St. Joe's to jump. Uh, yep, they're going to call that offside against Knees. Big break for the Crusaders. So that will set up an automatic first down. And we're going to have a timeout called here by St. Joe's with 2.24 remaining in the third quarter. We'll take a break in the action. St. Joe's up on Kenesha's 22 to 19. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Do you insure a lot of businesses? Yes, we do. How about restaurants? We got a bunch. Do you cover property damage? Yes, we do. How about my equipment? Covered. How about sewer backup? We got it. What if my cook gets hurt? They're covered. Foodborne illnesses? Covered. What if my party tank goes down? Covered under property damage. And you say this is all under one policy? One policy. When do I pay? Once a month. Just one time? Just one. Is there anything you don't cover? What's your record for consecutive questions asked? 31. Tables. We don't do tables. Gotta love Buffalo. For all your insurance questions, call the Wolf at 835-WOLF. now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house we're confident we'll find your dream home howard Hanna. home happens here welcome back everyone to western new york athletics off that st joe's fall start sets up the new chains for canisius pass caught by clark to the 30 excuse me to the 40 to around the 35 Tackled down, and the chains move once again for Canisius. Clark with a little hurdle of his own. 
Uh, Jake, out of town scoreboard, that other game we've been watching very closely, Willie Sweet Home, uh, Sansone hits Kelvin Kulik for a 30 yard touchdown pass, slams back up 35 to 28. I believe that game is now in the early stages of the fourth quarter. Penichev taking command of this Crusader offense, trying to get him down the field. The snap, looking to the right. That pass is caught by Doctor. Able to shake off one defender and tackle down by a couple at around the 20 yard line. A pickup of 11 and the third straight time. They move the chains. Yeah, you know what? They think that offside for uh, St. Joe's is coming back to her in a little bit. You can see Canisius, a little momentum starting to move the ball. They're in the red zone now. It's time for the St. Joe's defense to make a stop. This time in their formation, Walker is back in the game. Three wide receiver set. Snap, give to Dolson to the 10 yard line. Shaking off, trying to get into the end zone. And he is in for the touchdown. Great job by Dolson. Off to the right side again. It's similar on that Nick Penichev uh, touchdown run earlier. That right side of the field was wide open. Nobody over there for St. Joe's. Dolson's able to get to the outside and sneaks in for the touchdown. Canisius regains the lead. I think they're going just for the extra point here. See what happens here on the extra point try. The snaps down, the kicks on the way, and doink. Off the crossbar, extra point, no good. Another missed opportunity for Canisius. Now they're still up by three points, but Joe's has a kicker. You could be talking, uh, you know, maybe they attempt a field goal later in this game if it gets it. We've had a lot of field goals, uh, you know, in this rivalry game over the years. These teams both uh, have had good kickers. Uh, so we'll see as this we get to the end of the fourth quarter how that will factor into both of these coaching staffs. And we'll stay here on the broadcast booth before kickoff ensues. And you know, one thing I wanted to get a chance to talk about, seeing how this game has gone so far, is for one side of once one team that having a nice senior presence stepping up and being the big factors of their team, the other one showing that they have seniors on their team, but it's been a lot of the underclassmen, and I'm talking about the Canisius Crusaders, only two seniors start on this team. And... Throughout this offseason, heading into the season, Krasanski, when I spoke to him, said they want the young guys, you know, to you know, to come up and make the big impact. Model for every coach is put your best players out there. And so far, the underclassmen, as we've seen from Penichev, uh, Howard Dolson, Yancey, a sophomore, Doctor, uh, excuse me, Clark, uh, another sophomore, you know, guys that have stepped up big and become crucial parts on this team. You know, I we talked to Coach Krasanski over the summer and. He admitted there were guys that, you know, first they were just rumors, but admitted that there were guys who were expected to be starters for Canisius this year that had transferred out and went to other places, key players. And he knew he was going to have a young team this year, but as you can see, they have stepped up. And I think the scary part, if you're in the rest of the Monsignor Martin, this is Canisius' down year, and they're off to a 2-1 and one start. And you talk about those young guys are already making plays. What are they going to be like? next year, two years from now, when the, when these guys are gonna be seniors, juniors and seniors. Ball is gonna be at the 32 yard lines where the Marauders will start off. And so far we've had a back and forth battle. St. Joe's responds, Sue and Drive, Canisius does as well. Let's see what Joe's does here in the final seconds of the fourth quarter, or, excuse me, in the third quarter and heading into the fourth. Here's a snap, fake to Anderson. Option play, getting it past the 35 and down at around, looks like the 36 yard line. Pick up about four as the clock ticks with less than 40 seconds to go in the third. You wonder if in the black of their playbook, maybe they only practice it a couple times. There's some maybe trick, maybe a double pass or something for Joe's that they're gonna pull out soon. I wouldn't pull it out now, but sometime in the fourth quarter, 
because you know most of your playbook is you know options to Anderson or Jens. One of them keeping it. You have a few stuff on the outside, but they got to have something in their back of their playbook. And Kanich is saying that they recovered a fumble. They did. It's one of those things about those scrums. It's always hard to tell when that ball pops out loose, but Kanisha is coming up strong again on the defensive side, recovering the fumble, and they have the ball as with about nine seconds remaining in the third. And if my memory serves me right, I think that's the second turnover for St. Joe's. I don't think Kanisha has turned over the ball at all, at least um, less than, you know, maybe turnover on downs, but as far as fumbles or interceptions, uh, the – Canisius offense has been very clean and I um, remember I think in the last fumble recovery by the Crusaders they went down and scored so big opportunity for the Crusaders and they get all the momentum back at St. Joe's 39 yard line passes caught by Doctor at around the 30 and he will go out of bounds at around the looks like maybe 28 maybe 27 yard line you can tell that would uh, I don't know if you saw it but looks like a little late to there that hit Doctor was going out of bounds. Joe's has got to be careful that they've already been called. There's already been a couple late hits out of bounds in this game. They really can't afford one right now. So the ball at St. Joe's 27-yard line. Kanishas picks up 12 to get the first down. And that, folks, is the end of the third quarter. Three quarters away in this phenomenal high school football rivalry between St. Joe's and Kanishas. Kanishas up on right now 25 to 22. We'll take a break. Got one full quarter left to go in this matchup. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. Whether you've suffered a minor injury or just aren't feeling well, Western New York Immediate Care provides safe, quick, high-quality care at an affordable cost. Our clinicians are trained to diagnose and treat non-life-threatening injuries and illnesses and are equipped with on-site x-ray and labs to help you feel better, faster. With four convenient locations open seven days a week, Western New York Immediate Care is here to help when and where you need us. Visit us online to learn more. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs. We got 12 full minutes left to go to decide in this bragging rights game between Canisius and St. Joe's. Big Monsey or Martin matchup today. What a phenomenal it's been so far. It has not disappointed at all. Now at the 20 to 15, then a 10, and hit hard and out of bounds just before. Inching close to the end zone. Nizel Lash there with the big carry and coming up with the big boom is the senior, Andrew Bowen. What, what, where does he find the hole? Off to the left side. They get a hole for him, and then he kind of cuts back over to the right side for Canisius. Sets him up first and goal from the four. This might be the drive of the game at this point. We were talking about it during the break. If Canisius scores here, it's going to be very difficult for the Marauder. Marauders to get back into this game. That was a pickup of 22 yards for a first down and goal. Penuchev all by himself. Draw play. Trying to run it up the gut. And he picked up about maybe two yards on the play to bring up second down and goal. And you see a little extracurriculars after this play. Right now, this is Kanisha saying, we know we've been beat up front. But right now, we're winning this battle, and we took Penichev. We're, we're going to try to push it in directly at you, see if we can at will put this ball in. They're sending a message to, to St. Joe's right now. They believe they are winning the battle at the trenches. Well, Kavan Walker had a bit of confusion. He thought he was going to come in for that Wildcat, but Penuchev is staying out there. I was about to say, it looked like it was that Kavan Walker Wildcat formation. They just had Penichev take it. So Penichev and Howard Dolson. Right next to each other, three wide receivers. Brown motioning from right to left, the snap. A quick look, and touchdown Crusaders. And once again, it's the doctor, Mike Doctor on the catch. 
to extend this lead up now in the nine. I don't know about you, but I thought that pass was gonna get tipped. There were two defenders, one at the uh, at the line, another in the end zone. Neither of them managed to get a hand on it. It goes right to Doctor. He makes the big play, and now Canisius is up two scores early in this fourth quarter. And it looks like Canisius is gonna line up for the extra point and just take the one point. Snaps down, the kick is on the way, and the point after try is good. 32-22 is our score after the point after try by the junior uh, kicker, Domenico Colocchia. And it looks like we had a penalty marker down Talk about Penichev so far. Real quick as Penichev. I, and it looks like they're talking. Oh, Coach Krasanski's not happy right now. So we'll see how they're going to call this one. Oh, he is I, fired up. Now, it must have happened after the play. So it only would count on the kickoff. So it's not taking away points. So it was on Sports and Light Conduct on Kinesius. And Canisius, I don't know why you're taking that penalty right now. I mean, you have the head. You're ahead 10 points, up two scores. You have the momentum. No reason to take that and give any shot for St. Joe's coming out to the game. I wonder if Craig Krasanski thought uh, whatever the behavior was was not worthy of that call. So I'm sure that's what he was fired up about. But you still got to be careful with this juncture game. You don't want to give any chance for Joe's to get back in this one. You're almost holding them down. You got to finish the job. And this was around the same situation in the fourth quarter last week against Maritime Health Sciences. They had a 13 point lead, but that was because Maritime just kept coming back and then they had their uh, uh, sh second stringers out there for Kanishas and then they had to bring out Penyachev in the first team offense. Yeah, they had to bring him back out. They weren't, the second team wasn't able to seal the deal and it, you know, now it's gonna be up to the starters. There's no reason at this point to bring the second team in. Your starters gotta be on the field for the rest of it and finish this game off and get the victory. That goes off a of St. Joe's player, but quickly corralling it in the Kanisha's territory as well. So that squib kick there does not go in Kanisha's favor. Joe's is at their own, at Kanisha's 45 yard line. Well, that's the penalty coming back to bite Kanisha's a little bit. They were down back. Where they kick that off from their own 25? It only went a couple yards, so it'll give St. Joe's great field position. So now if you're Aaron Jens, you've had two fumbles, your coach Corona, you gotta tell him, hold on to the football. That is your, you gotta respect the football. What does that one head coach say uh, for the Buffalo Bills? You gotta respect the football. Uh, he's gotta hold on to the ball, get, get it to his playmakers, and keep making plays if he wants to get his team back in this game. And that will be the theme on this drive, respecting the ball, protecting the ball, on the offensive side for the Marauders. Gents rolling out to the right after the snap. Going downfield, and it's almost intercepted. Ten to receiver. Looked like that was Andrew Bowen. Yeah, I'm trying to catch the number of the Canisius defender who made that play, but, you know, what happens when the quarterback rolls out to the right, it really cuts the field in half. And if you saw, there were only really two receivers out that way, one kind of 10 yards out, another deeper out. So it makes it very easy for the defenders to go after. And the Canisius defender almost read the play and came up with the pick. So St. Joe's breaks out of the huddle. Anderson right next to Jens and the two wide receivers set. A lot shown in the box here. A possible blitz coming up for Canisius and Anderson. Trying to shake off a couple of tacklers, he does, and is brought down with positive yardage. And at first, it did not seem like that, Francis. I thought he was going to get swallowed up in the backfield. Yeah, Anderson, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was about a negative one-yard play that he turned into about a two-yard run. So a big play for Anderson, at least getting a couple yards. And you know what? That play kind of gives your team life a little bit. You're not just accepting loss. You're going to keep fighting for extra yardage. Hopefully they can turn that into something on this next play as they need to keep this drive alive. So he actually picked up three yards, a third down and seven. Less than 10 minutes to go in this game. Snap, 
faking the Anderson. Rolling out to the left. Trying to go deep shot, downfield, and it in and out of the hands of Deion Anderson. Incomplete. He had his man beat. Nice thrown ball by Gents, but does not equal in a big first down. Oh, <laughs> you're Deion Anderson, you're kicking yourself right now right in the bread basket. He beat two defenders and just couldn't haul it in. And he was he was at least going to be inside the five, if not even a touchdown. And of course, it came right after Anderson made the big play to turn the negative play into a positive. And uh, I don't know why it looks like Anderson's off the field for this fourth down play. I don't know why you need him right now if you're St. Joe's. Here's the snap, draw play, trying to run out to the right side, and he is well short of the first down marker. And whereas. St. Joe's had phenomenal field position. Canisius will get great field position with the turnover on downs. I don't get it. I, I thought Anderson should have been out there. I don't know. I, I get Jens has been having some success, but right now Anderson's your best player. you got to find a way to get him the ball in that fourth down. You need to make a big play. Um, and fortunately for Joe's, they went with Jens, and he just wasn't able to get around far enough to get the first down. So now the offense coming out for the Crusaders and Penyuchev, who has had another phenomenal outing so far. Three passing touchdowns, two of them going to Mike Doctor. Also has a rushing TD to give him four total touchdowns on the day so far with an opportunity to not only extend this double-digit lead, but to get another touchdown for himself. And a big run game there by Knichas as they inch closer to the first down marker. And if I'm Canisius right now, Coach Rosansky, that's all I'm doing. I'm just running the ball. I know you've had success throwing the football, but at this point, your offensive line is winning the battle in the trenches. So I would just keep going there until Joe's finds a way to stop you. And if I'm Joe's, I'm Coach Corona, I'm telling my guys, now is the time to punch the ball out. I thought I saw the tailback carrying the ball a little loose there. I would be telling my guys, go for the football. We need a turnover. One with that four wide receiver set, snap. Look it to the left side, it's caught. It's by Clark, picking up the first down on a couple yards more as they head into St. Joe's territory. Yeah, they, they uh, Coach Zansky did not take my advice. No surprise, he's way smarter than I am. Decides to throw the ball, and they get the first down at the end of the day. That's all they really need at this point. You know, the clock stops the clock, but they get the first down, keeps the drive moving. Um, they are going to restart the clock, or no, they're not. I apologize for that, but first down at the end of the day, that's all you're looking for. Quick score update between Ken West and Hamburg. Blue Devils up on the Bulldogs, 21-14 with 8-10 remaining in the fourth quarter. Klein to Atkins, who got into the end zone on a 90-yard touchdown reception. Here's the snap, the give, and immediately stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. And that's the play St. Joe's defense has been searching for for I would say almost a quarter and a half at this point um, they were doing that in the first and second quarter they had any trouble doing that in the third so they got that play let's see if the Marauders can build on that and come up with a stop and get the Kanisha's offense off the field officially give them a loss of one yard so second down and 11 Kanisha's just taking their time This time in the backfield, they have number two out there, Nizel Lash. Pass over to Doctor, picking up the fr uh, possible first down. Still staying up on his feet, and there he goes, getting that first down marker, tackled at around the 34, a pickup of 15 yards. When St. Joe's needs a big play, they go to Deion Anderson. When Canisius needs a big play, they go to Mike Doctor. Remember, they just went down for a loss, so they used screen out to Doctor. And you could see those Joe's players were going for the football, but Doctor was holding on. He gets them the first down. It looks like Kevon Walker is a little bit shaking up. Might just be fatigued or if he's... I Dealing think we, with a nagging injury? Yeah, I think he was uh, with the trainer. I remember seeing him earlier. 
in the game. So I think it might be a nagging thing. Maybe give him a few plays off. If, I, if I'm Coach Rzanski, I would might save him for defense at this point because that's where he's more impactful. It's Dyrell, Dyrell Howard Dolson who picked up three yards on that first down run. Less than seven minutes to go in the game, and you're seeing that Canisius huddle. They're just taking a little bit longer to go up for each offensive play. They know that they're up by 10, and the goal here is just kill clock. It, it, that's exactly it. And if you're St. Joe's, you can see a little bit of hands on the hips. You can see they're a little bit fatigued. They need some sort of play to turn things around. They're going to be going for the football, a turnover or something, just to try to get some momentum. Going four wide. Snap. Blitz coming. And it's caught to the left side to the 20. 15, 10, 5. Diving in. Touchdown, Canisius. Once again, Evan Dean on the touchdown reception. And Penuchev. The, the Canisius loves this play. Penuchev. Uh, Finds Dean in the inside, and then he catches the ball, turns to the outside, and finds that open ground. This is a lot of what this offense is built on, and it's Evan Dean again, a guy who really hasn't done much this season. Let me just try to pull up. Coming into this game, uh, coming into this game, he didn't have any stats on, I'm sorry, he had eight catches, 35 yards, no TDs coming into this one. Now he has two TDs on the year. He has come up big. You know, in these rivalry games, it's always about there's some kind of unsung player who just rises to the moment. Maybe they're not quite paid attention to by the other team, or it's the rivalry gets them going, or a combination of all of it. Right now it's been him that's been stepping up in this big moment. He's putting his stamp on this rivalry. Kick there on the point after try by Kalokia is good. 39-22 is our score with 6-17 remaining in this game. And now it's become, at the start of this game, was a back-and-forth battle. And so far, as this game has come along, we've seen the emergence of Kanisha's quarterback, Nicholas Penichev, now has five touchdowns on the day, four through the air, and one on the ground. Yeah, you know, he's gone to a rhythm as this game's gone along. Remember, this is a rhythm-based offense, lots of short throws. And the Joe's team, the Joe's defense really hasn't done anything to throw him off this rhythm. And you keep going in that rhythm. Then finally the run game starts to get going. And you become very difficult to stop at, uh, as an offense. Putting on the boot, squibbing it to inside the 20. Now trying to go for a possible big run return past the 35 and close to the 40. They'll officially spot him at the 37-yard line. All right, if you're St. Joe's, there's no 40-point play. What is it, um, 18, was it 17-point lead for Canisius? My math is... It is, yes. Okay, I didn't go to school for math. Um <laughs> But if, if there's no 17-point play. So if you're Coach Corona, you're just going to go little by little. Now, you can't settle for three- and five-yard runs, but you don't have to go to the end zone on the first play. Do you have 10-yard plays? You can do 15-yard plays, little stuff, and then you build your way towards the end zone. Get, go for an onside kick, and then you know try to see if you can get yourself back in this game. Here's a snap. Gents looking incomplete. Looks like the tender receiver, I believe that was number eight. I think uh, that was Bowen there as the tender receiver. And the Canadian linebackers all over that play. They knew exactly where that was going, and uh, the defender made a play, clean play on the ball to not, let, not allow that catch to happen. So at this point in the game, you know, it's a situation for Joe's where it's definitely very, very challenging to come back, but you never want to quit. You never want to give up especially on this drive. Now the keep over to Gents, getting the big hole he needed to pick up the first down and more. 
past the 45 and down close to the 47, maybe 48. All right, good start for St. Joe's. Now, he wasn't able to get out of bounds, so that clock is running. You don't love that if you're Coach Corona, but at least you get a positive play going. You haven't had a ton of those in this fourth quarter. So, excuse me, they only picked up nine yards, but one yard away from the first down. And I was right all along. They did get the first down. Okay. <laughs> it looked like they had an extra yard or two where they initially spot the ball. And you know what? That is going to give uh, St. Joe's a chance to catch their breath. It stopped the clock for just a moment for them. Uh, I think they're going to start quickening the pace soon. They're not quite at that fast pace yet, but I imagine they're going to get there very soon. Gents under center. The fake to Anderson, rolling out to the right, and the pass is caught at around the midfield marker. I think he fumbled it out of bounds, so Joe's gets about four yards in that play. Luckily, though, it went out of bounds on that one. So little by little they go, but at this point in the game, that's not what you need. You've got to try to find a way to get some big yardage. Looked like that might have been number nine there who was the receiver, Henry Murphy. Here's a second down and six play. Pass is caught. Staying up on his feet, shaking off one defender. Pass the 40 to the 45, well, excuse me, 35. And down at the 30 three yard line pick up of about 16 yards and another St. Joe's first down. Yeah, that was Javier Torres on the catch. We saw him make a big catch earlier to keep a drive alive along the sideline. He makes a big catch there, breaks away from the tackle, able to get the first down and go out of bounds. So if you're St. Joe's, you gotta build on that. You gotta build on your momentum. The football is a game of momentum. Right now you really don't have much, but you have a little, you have a shot at uh, putting something together. Less than five minutes to go in this game, and it's like a timeout called by Kenesha's with 4.56 left to go in this game. We'll take a quick break in the action. You're watching Western New York Athletics. I love being home. We realize now more than ever is the perfect time to have the perfect house. We're confident we'll find your dream home. Howard Hanna, home happens here. Sometimes it just isn't your day. We all need a little help from time to time. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care. And we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. Welcome back, everyone, to Western New York Athletics. My name is Jacob Fike. Alongside me is Francis Beck as we are live here at St. Joe's High School with 456 remaining and with this amount of time left, not a lot of time left for St. Joe's, but at some point with the next couple of minutes, they got to get a big touchdown. Yeah, they do very quickly. And we mentioned it uh, off air. It's Coach Rosansky's third timeout. So if this game gets much closer and his offense needs to go out and score, he doesn't have a timeout to give. So we'll hopefully, if you're for Canisius, it doesn't come to that. But we got to keep that in the back of our heads right now. Going with that two wide receiver set. Here's the snap. Gents feeling the pressure, trying to evade, staying in the pocket. It is caught and hit hard by who else? Nizel Lash. Nizel Lash, as you mentioned, having a great game. A straight hit. I, I thought it was a little high, but no call there. Luckily, the St. Joe's player is up. Um, but you know what, that pass doesn't even happen without Deion Anderson. He actually made a great play. He was set there to block, and he noticed the defender, defensive line, at defensive end was coming off the ball. He almost hit Jens, but Jens was able to step up, and Anderson comes, turns around and blocks him out of the way to allow Jens to get that ball off. Anderson doing everything he can to keep his team in the game. They got to get to the 23-yard line to pick up the first. Anderson with the call, and it looked like he tripped up and looks like the hand of number one, Kevon Walker, was able to bring him down as Anderson tripped up and fell. Now we got two penalty flags down. 
Yeah, Kanisha's player has to be really pulled out of the pile. And you see a flag there. I wonder if they're going to call offsetting or if there's going to be 15 free yards for Joes. We saw, you know, we saw earlier an unsportsmanlike after the touchdown or the extra point against Canisius. I believe that was here in the fourth quarter. We've seen a little bit of chippy play here. Uh, you can tell this Canisius team is fired up right now, but they need to keep those emotions in check, especially in a rivalry game like this. So the refs are still going to have a discussion. Let's see what the official word is. So you got personal foul on St. Joe's and one on Canisius. So those all are going to offset. So if you're Canisius, you can take a breath knowing that really doesn't hurt you. Because, uh, again, that play went for minimal yardage on that one. Um, so that play does really doesn't hurt you. But that's something you really can't afford to do in a game like this. They really need to keep their discipline in check. So originally said second down and 10, which was incorrect. Now they made it third down and 10. Because that was off a carry by Anderson, who got no yardage. So here we go on a third down and 10. They go two wide receivers. Anderson right next to Jens. Draw play once more, trying to get the holes he needs to get through to the first down. And he picks some up and more, getting into the Kanisha's red zone. Once again, the senior quarterback, Aaron Jens, using his speed. Yeah, Jens. Uh he gets a hole on the right side and it just bounces out to the sideline and gets a, a good run there, sets up a first down for St. Joe's. St. Joe's good for them, still moving the ball. Remember, last year this game was 66 to nothing, Canisius. We're certainly not going to have that here today. Definitely not, and we'll see what St. Joe's does here on the 13-yard line in Canisius territory. Clock stopping at four minutes and 28 seconds. Here's Gents, another draw play to the outside. He might have gotten to the 10. Might be inside the 10 as well. Picking up a couple more yards. We've seen a couple plays now to the right side. I think you're eventually going to see something to, uh, to the left side. I wonder if maybe they're setting up for another screen pass or a give to Anderson over to the left side and give him the space and allow him to bounce outside and get to the end zone. But this Joe's team's got to move it. They're under four minutes right now, and you need three scores to uh, get back in. You need three scores to win this game. The snap. And a give to Anderson, pushing off one defender, trying to inch closer into the goal line. And it looks like he might be very close. He might be a yard, maybe two yards short. I Yeah, but he did get the first down in the that clock continues to run. I would like to see, I don't know about you, Jake, I would like to see a little more of an urgency from this Marauder offense right now, but I do I do like the choice to give it to uh, Anderson. And looks like the officials called a timeout. Yeah, it looks like we have a... Oh, it looks like an injury. Uh, you well, catch a number there? Well, it looks like doctors down oh, it's like he's coming out but we had another Kenesha's player on one knee at the far side of the end zone looks like he's staying in the game though it looked like doctor was originally the one that was coming out snap it's high ends up bobbling it Ball's on the ground, and the Crusaders, for the third time, recover the fumble. You know what? Turnovers have come back to haunt this St. Joe's team all, all game long, and that time, high snap. Jens wasn't able to, have, to handle it, and falls on the ground. Canisius recovers, and I think that'll seal this game for the Crusaders. Yeah, just a tough day for the St. Joe's offense. You know, you know, we talk about how complicated football can be. 
But at the end of the day, it comes down to it, it comes down to the turnover battle. And you look at right now, St. Joe's has turned over the ball three times. Canisius has not turned it over whatsoever. And right now the scoreboard reflects that 39-22 uh, Canisius lead with three minutes to go. Well, we have about three minutes and 10 seconds left to go. Heard a little bit from the Canisius student section uh, saying some goodbye chants over to St. Western New York Immediate Care's new locations are now open. If you have the schedule uh, for both teams, Francis, what do they got coming up next? Um, you know what? That's what I forgot to grab in my notes. <laughs> um, I know Canisius, though, next week is going to Lancaster on Friday night uh, in a big matchup that many of us who have been following high school football have been waiting for for years. Canisius, Lancaster, you know, there's always this back and forth between the privates and the publics. Who's better? And you're going to have a chance to get a little clips and see who maybe is better in that one. So Canisius has a big game at Lancaster next Friday night. And I think St. Joe's, I want to say they take on St. Mary's. We'll look that up in a second, um, who they're going to take on. Um, I think Jake's going to find that. But whoever they face, I think it is going to be another local opponent. I want to say it's St. Mary's or St. Joe's. Um, as Canisius has the ball in the, with the final three minutes. And they're just going to just run the ball to the left side to try to kill some clock. It's Canisius, a phenomenal job here on the road. It didn't look like as much where like Joe's would have been able to break that three-year drought of losing to Canisius. But right now it just seems like the Crusaders will keep that winning streak going. But you know what? Let's flip it the other way. Is there positive to take away from this if you're St. Joe's? Yes. Last year, 66 to nothing loss. This year, nothing like that. This year, you came off, you're now 3-1 and one on the season. Your offense is moving the ball well. This is a team that struggled to get a win. They Remember this team struggled with Sweet Home last year, a team that had trouble making the playoffs in Class A in Section 6. Now this is a team uh, that can hang with the big boys right now officially with the, with the big boys in Monsignor Martin, Canisius and St. Francis, like it should be. That's the way it should be. These three pillars up here in Mon in the A division of Monsignor Martin uh, running things. And, you know, it showed that this program isn't quite back, but they're certainly heading in the right direction. You know, that was the question I posed to the challenge. I posed to Adam Gorski for our Western York Athletics football report, our first edition, I said, go to Coach Mike Corona, tell me what's the state of St. Joe's. And, you know, what he kind of said is kind of played out so far. They're a better team. They have a lot of senior leadership who can make plays, and they're certainly improved of where they've been the past few years. And, it, it, it you know, Coach Corona has this thing going in the right direction. I believe we talked about it earlier in the broadcast. This St. Joe's program between their three teams has over 90 players. You have some schools, they're having trouble keeping a varsity season going or, you know, they don't even have a, or they, you know, instead of having a modified team, they are, um, instead of having modified JV varsity, they have just a varsity and this modified JV combo team. Um, so the fact they have three teams with only four grades in their program thriving, is it, just a testament to sit, to show uh, the program, uh, what Coach Corona has done with St. Joe's and the direction they're heading in. And back to what you were saying about St. Joe's next matchup, you are correct, uh, Francis. They take on St. Mary's next week for a 2 p.m. kickoff. As we were less they'll than be 90s. Here, right? Will they be at St. Mary's? Uh, it will be at St. Mary's. So we got less than 80 seconds to go here in the game. And I believe we don't have a score update, but I believe O'Hara and St. Mary's are taking on each other not too far away from here at Cardinal O'Hara, maybe a uh, five, ten-minute drive depending on where you park from here. Uh, to get over to that game. And from our own Frank Wolf, Will East up on Sweet Home, 42-35 to 35 late in the fourth quarter. Haven't seen an update yet or the possible final of that game. Yeah, so Will East looks like they're going to take control of that Class A2 division. I know, I think it's 
set for, if my memory serves me right, because I was looking at the schedule last night, because this is all I do now, uh, is look at the football schedule. I think it's going to be the last Thursday night of the season. Uh, we'll have uh, Will East and McKinley. If McKinley continues the way they are right now, that game could decide end of the season who wins Class A2 division and possibly gets the first seed. Nothing better than that, right, Jake? Yeah, absolutely. As Penuchev takes the final knee as the clock ticks with less than 15 seconds left to go. On the road, Canisius picks up a big win against St. Joe's as both teams will now move to an overall record of 3-1. and one. I want to thank everyone for tuning into this broadcast live on Western New York Athletics, whether it's been on the Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube page. Thank you for everyone for tuning into this one as we will go ahead and sign off on this broadcast as Canisius and St. Joe's will give their post-game handshakes for our color guy, Francis Peck. I'm Jacob Fack signing off on this one. Canisius winning 39-22 to over St. Joe's. Life can be full of surprises, but not always the good kind. That's why we're committed to providing safe, quick, and cost-effective care, and we keep it simple. Just walk in. We're here for you. Learn more today. I love being home. There's nothing better than owning the perfect house to come home to. You've earned it, and we'll make it happen. Our local real estate experts and in-house team of financial professionals make buying or selling your home simple. Howard Hanna. Home happens here.